my name my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. Hi guys, welcome to the stream. Hope you guys are doing well. I know. Yes, I shouldn't be playing Football Manager 21 anymore. I should be doing something else. In fact, I am doing a lot of other things at the moment. So, um, FM 21 priorities aren't very high at the moment because I've got to get so much done. But I'm hoping you guys are well. Uh, plenty of things have been happening, man, over the last couple of days. We saw a dancing a ballerina called Mo Salah scoring a phenomenal goal. How he managed to stay on his feet for that much amount of time is beyond me. I mean, he just danced his way through a defense. And it just made me wonder about certain things, right? Okay, it just it just made me wonder about one thing, right? Okay, I want to share this with you guys very quickly. Mo Salah, Romelu Lukaku. Let's compare these two players. Now, Romelu Lukaku this season has been kind of interesting because he... The question, a lot of people are going like, Lukaku, why did we bring him in? You know, he's not been doing so well. Um, if you look at Lukaku's numbers for the season, right? I mean, let's not let's not go there first. Let's look at this. This is enough, okay? At the moment, Salah has got... Lukaku and Salah have got the... they about the same in terms of XG per 90, which means, you know, big chances per 90, how many do they get in a game? Right, both of them are about the same... Goal output from Salah is higher than um, Lukaku. Does that mean that Salah is a better better at all this? But you, you can't just look at XG and goals, right? In football manager or even in football analytics, right? You got to look at things like um, how good a team is at cr um, those creating situations where um, it's a, a low defensive pressure you know, basically creating good chances. How good are they at creating good chances for themselves? It's a very easy way to explain it. And then you've got to look at the vice versa as well. And then you've got to also account for things like um, the player's finishing skills. So when Lukaku was playing in Inter Milan, he had a, what we call, we call an XA, which is the attempts per 90 was very close to the numbers he's generating right now. I mean, it's like 0 0.2. It was 0 0.2. Uh, in, uh, I think it was 0 0.2, if I'm not mistaken. I've got a chart somewhere. Okay, I, I actually did a whole chart. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. And this is actually my book for FM22. <laughs> right, so, see, uh, if... Uh, oh, yeah, you can't see the book. So, haha, sorry, the book is hidden. That's good, you know, as I'll kick my ass. Okay, um... So essentially, right, when it comes to Lukaku, right, when he was Inter Milan, his XG for the season was 23.4. He scored 24 goals. He had 11 assists. Okay, basically, the boy was uh, performing pretty close to his XG. All right, so... And then uh, now with uh, Chelsea, he is at XG... He scores, he gets like 0 0.73 good chances a game, which is almost the same as uh, what he did at Milan. But his goal output is a bit lower. So, if you're looking at the quality of the player, right? Is it the player or the system? Because he is still giving up uh, in terms of assists, right? Creati the creative output from the player in terms of creating chances for his friends. And uh, when he was playing at Milan, he was he I think last season he did something like 11 assists. Which works out to about 0 0.26 XG att attempts per 90. Right now at Chelsea, he's doing more. He's doing a higher number, 0 0.29. Even though there has no reg registered assist yet, he's cr he has been involved in laying off chances for his players that sometimes they just weren't able to finish. So um, people are just going to point at uh, the goal tally and say Lukaku is just not performing. The reality of the thing is that Lukaku is playing in a slightly, slightly different way when he was playing in Milan, right? So he's now floating a bit more like a butterfly, right? He's moving around, linking up play in the final third with the... Depending on who Mr. Tuchel, Tuchel decides to put on the pitch on that day. I think I remember against Southampton, uh, wasn't it when Sean, uh, James watt Pros was sent off, uh, they switched to a 3 for one 2 Timo Werner was pushed up. Um, otherwise, Lukaku flirts and tries to support He's a focus of attacks, no doubt, but he also 
big plays a big part in building up play up and down the flanks. So the way I see it, first up, Liverpool are better at creating, putting themselves in positions where they're going to score goals. Right? Um, Chelsea, on the other hand, they need to do, in order for them to be tight, to win the title this year, they're going to have to do slightly better. Right? Because otherwise, you, you got this top world-class striker in Romelu Lukaku, who's only well, he's got seven or uh, three goals out of seven appearances, which doesn't mean he's not going to get, like, he's going to, well, let's assume he does, um, let's assume he does 40 appearances for his club. Right, that's not a lot of goals, man. Like 15, 16 goals in a season. Yeah, at the rate he's going, he's gonna not he's not gonna get those kind of numbers because uh, usually we look at strikers, XG and all this all that nonsense, right? There's a lot of nonsense in this. I mean like sometimes you have to look at shots, you have to look at all the you just can't look at XG alone. I know a lot of people just sometimes look at XG and look at goals, right? And then they go they get lost in the numbers. Actually, you should look at shots, how many shots you did inside the box, how many, how many stuff. And when I when I do the book, I'm gonna simplify it for you guys, like because we're gonna have the data hub. You're gonna have a lot of information. So how do you know if your striker is actually performing well? So I'm gonna basically show you how I do it, right? Which is I only count shots in my head <laughs> when he's playing. Because first I look for the number. Then I kind of do a simple, uh, a simple derivation, right? Based on the total number of shots he's I expect him to generate uh, I generate in a match. Then I then I look at uh okay, he needs three shots a game for him to score one goal. Like Lukaku needs something like you need to generate you need to give Lukaku two shots inside the box for him to get one goal. Okay. So that's how I look at it. So when you when you create a tactic, you need to know what those numbers are. Right? So once you know those numbers, right, you know Either your tactic is completely shite at producing those kind of numbers, or whether your 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 you, your player is just not good enough, right? Maybe you need to train him. Maybe you need to give, give him a trade. So the the problem with most people is this: the numbers in the data hub are going to be so overwhelming. Okay, they're not going to be able to separate the forest from the trees. So my job, my what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to paint the forest for you. Instead of focusing on the trees. Because if, if we go on the trees alone, guys, we're going to be there forever. And that's not my goal. I I, I I am 50 bloody years old. I got no time to do Mickey Mouse shit, spend six hours playing a game. Okay? Right? I don't do the kind of stuff I used to do as 19 years old. Right? When I played this game last time. Nowadays, when I play this game, it's to the point and quick and get it done with. That's it. If I don't win, I don't win. I don't try to min-max the game to such a point that I have to, you know, I have to stare at the bloody computer screen, staring at every single transition, so be it. Such is la vie, man. Such is life. Oh, you guys, man. Kabi RFC, welcome to the stream. Haven't seen you before. Hope you come down more often. Um, hey, my, but Dominique, I'm well. Thank you for asking. Ritsky Pradana, my brother. How are you, man? James, nine. Do you think Arsenal can play the 3-4-3? Three, three? Ben White and Tierney as the white centre-backs. I mean, Ben White and Tierney can play. Kieran Tierney is, Kieran Tierney is not exactly a slow poke, right? He's a good fullback, right? So he is a damn good fullback. So there is no reason why you cannot play with Kieran Tierney. Ben White, I'm not so sure. Because I don't know what his attributes are. The key about playing a back three is not your wing back. Okay, your wing backs are important, that's for sure. Like, But you're talking about FM22, I assume, not FM21, right? Because... Now it's not the time that we ask me how to play FM21. You should be asking me how to play FM22 because, as you know, I probably already know how to play FM22. Um, the you know, the goal in a three four three, your wing backs are important, but in FM22 because your white centre backs push up, your white centre backs are going to be just as important as your wing backs. In fact, taking Chelsea as an example, you can easily play Cesar as a Palaqueta as a white central defender right now because what you want in your white central defenders is the ability to bring the ball to defense, dribble, right? Bring the ball for be composed, uh, you know, look, be able to find the pass, be able to cross. You need all of those attributes to play a white central defender. Right? That 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 is the thing that you have to focus on, right? Because you we know that 
Arsenal has those wing backs. There's no denying it. Arsenal has got uh, phenomenal wing backs. They've got some of the best wing backs. I mean, Bellerin is still playing in Arsenal, right? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, I mean, like, fuck me, man. If I had Arsenal, right? I mean, Bellerin would be my go to. I mean, isn't Bellerin still at Arsenal? I must be dreaming. I, mean, I think so. I can't remember if he's still there or not. I haven't really spent a lot of time looking at Arsenal. But hell, man, Hector Bellerin in a 3 4 3. You're going to tear the whole planet apart and with him on the pitch. Because his acceleration is something like 18. Right? So one of the, he's one of the fastest. In fact, when I played FM21 draft mode, I always go for Hector Bellerin when I'm going to play a narrow system because he's the fastest wingback I can get on my hands on, who, is, who also has the intelligence to you know when to come back, when to go. I mean, his attributes are too good for FM21, in my opinion. Right? But he can get down the flanks. So if you, the thing is this, right? What you want in your wingbacks is not necessarily a lot of speed, but you know, having him there was just going to give you options. But your central white center backs, they have to be able to bring the ball out. And the guy in the middle has got to have damn good con uh, anticipation. Right? You need him to have good anticipation. All three of the defense, when you want to play these back three systems, these modern back three systems, you can get away with one, one joker that's not very good. I mean, to give you an example. Atletico Madrid. Oops, hit my microphone there. Got Atletico Madrid, right? Atletico Madrid have actually got a player called Jimenez who's pretty good. He can see the... He, he's like... He's got this bloody... I don't know what he has, right? <laughs> this guy's got like some kind of laser-guided system in his brain. Okay? The guy can ping one diagonal anywhere on the pitch and he's placed it right in defense. Uh, then we got Philippe. <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> Philippe is the guy that when he has the ball... He turns his back straight away because he, he he can't bring the ball forward. He has to give it back to somebody. So he usually gives it back to the goalkeeper. So you can play a back three with one weak defender. On that weak defender side, you put a very good fullback who is fast. So you can come and help him out. So that's how you got to start thinking of three four threes Because the three four three in FM22 will be a pendulum, will create pendulum effects. See, because when we play the game right now, a back four gives us the pendulum effect, right? So what's the pendulum effect? Uh, the fullback goes up the pitch, the whole bloody formation, the eh, everyone's going up. Then the, the guys on the left, they kind of like stay tucked in, right? They don't they don't always go bombing down the flanks, right? Then uh, I expect SI to enhance this further in FM22 because the back three, the way it works in real life, right, is what I call, what I, I mean, I call it the pendulum effect because there's no other way for me to describe it. The first person to start using this effect was Antonio Conte. Way back when I was managing Chelsea. That's when I made a request to SI to give me the pendulum effect. I wrote a really long thesis. Okay, this is why we need this. Da -da 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 that was way back in 2016. I wrote a long, long ass story supporting my this thing that we need this white central defender to cover the pitch and I, we need to see this effect because more and more teams are going to start playing like that. And now... You can do that with Atletico Madrid. So that's what you have to aim to do with Arsenal as well. So you're going to have to do be able to do that. So to, in order for you to do that, one of your fullbacks, one, has to be able to bring the ball up. Not necessarily just bring the ball out of defence. You get a trade. You can have the trade bring up the ball out of defence, right? And the person gets lost with the ball. That's a shitty thing that I do, man. So like, you know, they can screw things up. Okay. There's... I, Chelsea, Tuchel, and Conte, Inter is a different system, yeah. Um, Tuchel and Conte, slightly different, right? Not exact, not entirely the same. Not, 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 not the way to use it, right? So I didn't do the Conte system again. I did a Conte system a long time ago. Yeah, I can't even remember half of the Conte system now. Uh, then we got um, Diego Simeone. What did he do last year? Last year, he had a back three as well. He went... He ditched the four four because with uh with uh Atletico Madrid they went through this period where they had injuries and you know everybody seems to want to want an Atletico Madrid player. <laughs> so yeah, I mean uh, poor guy, right? Yeah, as a manager, you don't know which of your players are gonna be at the club, no. So like one one fine day he wakes up and says, Oh shit, there's all this player now. Alright, so he had to like he had to make do and then at one point they ended up playing a back three, a three a 352, right? 3511 one or 352, uh, basically. It was 352. There Yannick Carrasco in, on top. Oh, I like I like the system as well. <sighs> he has to change from a 3421 to a 24231. Yeah, Tukal is having an issue right now, right? Because 
Okay, when they are man up, like they were at Southampton, they switched to a three four one two. But now they, I don't, I don't, I don't know about the three four two one because I, I rather think they should go a bit wider, right? Because it, when you push the wing backs up and you have those guys narrow, he's more. One thing, think about Tuchel is very possessed. He he also almost singularly possessed by getting his. He's central players to go wide and support play and then come back in again. So, I mean, then why did you start them wide to begin with? Right, then get the other wing, the other winger to move inside. Right, as he does that. Pendulum effect. I mean, I don't get some of the... I mean, yeah, he does that to some extent, but... Yeah, I think they need, he needs to get a bit more out of... Uh, I would say he needs to get a bit more out of anything, but he just has to, like, tweak his system, I guess. Uh, We'll never. I mean, I'm not a manager, so we'll see. As fans, it's easy for us to talk. <laughs> oh, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. The next thing you know, you look like an idiot because he's doing better without your advice. So I better keep quiet. <laughs> like, like, what's his name? Uh, we, we've got another. I mean, how many? Uh, how okay? How many of you out there right now? I mean, there must be a loads of you out there. Was Newcastle fans right jumping up and down, happy like beavers. And some of them are talking about, already talking about 40, uh, how much money we're going to get in a transfer kitty. And then, you know the FM live stream we just had? Everybody's going, how much are we going to see in our war chest? Transfer, uh, uh, transfer funds, how much money is, uh, how much money is Newcastle going to get in FM22? I'm like, dude, first, you know, you shouldn't be more worried about, yeah, we don't know which league you're going to be in, man. <laughs> Championship or the premiership. Let's, let's, let's focus about getting out of the, you know, yeah, <clears throat> you know, make sure you survive long enough to be in a premiership, man. Okay, what have we got? 4 2 3 1 4 3 3. Possession is okay. Can we switch over and check out the comments? <laughs> okay, oh, nice question, Risky. What do I think about the stream? First up, I, hit, I, I was moderating the stream for the first two hours. And so I was laughing my head off because everybody was asking about the uh, Newcastle transfer <laughs> kitty. And I was like, dude, that's so like, no, as I can't answer that question for because we don't know nobody knows and for that matter we haven't reached that you know it's not even gonna be how do I put this very mildly okay the, guys the season has already started it's not going to be in there it's coming in the winter update okay if anything else so if you guys Newcastle fans don't know anything about football manager don't ask a dumb question like how much money is Newcastle going to get now? Are we going to get the Saudis already taking over the club at the start of the season? Ain't happening. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I, was, I didn't know how to put it on the street. I was like laughing my head off. I'd be mean, like, I mean, I got a lot of Johnny friends, right? But, I mean, how much do you know about football? You know, you think what, as I can ro rewind the clock, back, give you a head start, is it? <laughs> you want a head start? <laughs> Bloody hell. Already I'm pissed as hell that countries are buying out clubs. It's such an obscene thing to know that your favorite club, I mean, if I was there, I mean, like, you, you know, you might, are you getting visas to travel to Saudi Arabia? <laughs> I hope you do. Or are the Saudi Arabians going to get visas to come to England? Like, you know, hope, you know, long stay visa because, you know, we own your bloody club now. I, I, I find it disgusting anyway. So, yeah. Sorry for that. I mean, I'm, I know I'm ranting, but shit, boy, it's true. It is true, man. What a goal from Nesto Crowe! Look at that play, baby. Yes, I nuked this in FM. Uh, yeah. I came up with a tactic, sent it to SI, scored eight goals every game. You know, I do that every every year before. I mean, I try, I try to do that. I mean, last year, I don't think I sent a nuking tactic. This year, I did. As I hear, take a look at my tactic. I just scored eight goals in three games. I think the game is broken. You know, they should. The silver with the Oh, the, I, I love that, right? You know, I want to see more of those kind of hitters, right? Okay. I want to see a downwards hitter. Have you ever seen one in this entire game? I've never seen one. Animation where the hitter comes in, the guy hits the ball downwards. You see, I see them all going in the air, right? Want a downwards hitter hitting the ground and going up. Man, that is a 
classic. It's one of the tough hitters to do, you know. You, know, you get up higher than the board and then you oh my neck. <laughs> oh fuck my neck. Oh my neck. Oh my neck. Oh my neck. I'm not 21 years old anymore. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Oh, man, I do this to myself all the bloody time. Oh, God. <laughs> and, you know, I tell you another thing. It's, this is hilarious, okay? You know these heart conditions? Whenever my son watches me play, right, he will, you know, like, right now, it's pretty good, right? Then halfway through the game, right, he sees this heart being right? Daddy, daddy, you have to change the player. He's going to die. <laughs> He's going to die. His heart is about to die, Daddy. Daddy, why is he so angry? I mean, even my kids can understand these icons. My God. So what did I think about the stream? First up, the Newcastle thing. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. I just had to say something about it. Is that hilarious, okay? All right. The second thing I thought, okay, uh, it's pretty hard to say anything about the match engine. You know why? Because we're watching the key highlights. I don't see very much. The animations were really nice. Um, I'm not a big fan of recruitment meetings, never been one. And I'm not a big fan of having to meet my staff uh, twice a week, a fortnight, once a month. I'm hoping they have this never button at the bottom, which gives you the option, right? The option of never meeting your staff, because that's what I want. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's what I want to do. So if they have that option, I'm happy. I'm okay. I mean, there are going to be some of you out there who love the... Uh, the ability to meet the staff. Okay, I'll tell you why it's important. Okay, at the start of a season, I've always wished, right, that my staff would come to me, right? I mean, come on, guys, seriously. Don't you wish your staff would come to you and tell you, hey, we've got these five high value players, all right? You better extend their contracts. Otherwise, you know, you're screwed. Because it has happened to me so many times in my saves, right? Where I go in and then um, I start the save so excited. I run off like a mad hatter. Okay. And then suddenly I discover somebody comes in with this big ass, you know, minimum release claw undercut. He comes in with the minimum release claw to take one of my players off. It's happened to me a few times. So it's, it's kind of cool to have these kind of meetings. If the meetings include information to that effect, why not? I only do the meeting once at the start of a season. After that, Say la vie, I don't want to see you anymore because I'm taking over all the contract negotiation talks myself. Then I don't mind. Then I think it's a good addition to the game. And if as I include the option for me uh, to basically not want to have those meetings too, cool. Then I'm fine with it. I mean, as long as you give me the option, I don't mind. Yeah, so. I mean, why deny others, right? I mean, why deny... Oh, man, we're on a bloody scoring rampage, man, at the moment. Um... Why deny others the chance to be immersed in the life of a football manager? Right? Who am I to deny you? You might be. You might like this part of the game. That I know there are guys who love transfer day, deadline day. Like they want to play the game because of transfer deadline day. And now there are some people. You see, we're not gonna. Everybody likes different parts of this game. I love the tactics. Some people they download the plug and play tactics, right? Some people love training. Other people can't be asked about training. I mean, how are you gonna make everybody happy? Right, so yeah, to, to each his own, yeah, that kind of thing. So I, I thought there was a uh, recruitment meetings was not a bad thing to do. Uh, these staff meetings, I don't think it's a bad thing, right? If you, if you give me the option to say Arrivederci, I uh, love it even more. Okay, let's see, we got one. See this, this my if my, if my son sees this, he says he's gonna daddy, 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 he's dying, daddy, take him off, daddy, he's gonna die. My God, where does my son get these ideas from? Robbie Thompson, who are you? Okay. I don't know who he is. I've signed him. I have no clue what kind of a player he is. Hold on, let me check. Robbie Thompson, what kind of a player are you? You got absolutely no bravery, but you're as fast as Grease Lightning, man. 16, 14. You got absolutely no, okay. Uh, it's okay. As long as you're fast. Yeah, who, who cares if you can you need to tackle? I mean, with three at the back here, you don't exactly need high bravery in these positions. And the first bloody attack comes on from, from the other side. Look at that. Who needs high bravery when he got high acceleration? All he does is read the danger and goes out there. Hey, man, he's gonna, I'm going to get that before he can even throw in a challenge. This how these guys with low, bra low bravery and high acceleration operate. Eh? 
Adi cowards. Hey, Joey. I love Joey, man. Okay, oh, no, Kron takes it out again. Oh, he couldn't get in. Okay, so we've done the recruitment meetings, right? Okay. What else did we see? Uh, I, I actually have the stream, right? but I'm not going to go to the stream. Uh, Data Hub. I thought Data Hub was pretty cool. I, different people have different ways of playing with Data Hub, right? So I, I can't say if the Data Hub is a phenomenal or not phenomenal. I, I didn't really play with it, but I saw the options. There are quite a lot. So yeah, we'll wait and see. Yeah? Uh, what about the... Um, there's something that I thought was a bit off. And this, I already sent in a note. <laughs> okay, now, okay, let's 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 understand one thing, right? What we saw was basically an alpha version of the game. It's not even a beta version, so it's an alpha version. So it doesn't mean that the game is finalized. So SI are definitely going to do things along the way to tweak things. And one of the things I hope they damn well tweak <laughs> is the pressing, because after all the talk. <laughs> about how your players are going to be super tired. I didn't notice it so much, right? I mean, okay, perhaps it's because um, we were watching on key highlights, right? When you're watching your key highlights, you're not really going to see a lot of information on the screen, right? You, you're, not, you're not going to be able to tell everything because you, you literally have to be playing the game yourself. These kind of things is very hard for you to... I mean, I, I can't tell. Like, they did look like sometimes the players, their, their team, Sheffield United, seemed to drop into a mid-block. I mean, that was what I was noticing. Like sometimes, you know, they go from high press to mid-block and you know, like players are not dropping deeper and deeper instead of pressing higher and higher. Which that, that I did notice. So I think the pressing, they gotta dial that shit up, man. <laughs> they gotta make it so that... Um, they gotta, they gotta make it. Um, uh, shut up. Okay. They gotta make it so that it's expensive. Meaning, up. Uh, okay. Let's just look at this squad, for example. Right. So we just played a game. Um, okay. We just played a game. This is one of the best times to see it. Okay. We just played this game. All right. Okay. You see these players? Okay. We got the guys on the bench. They should actually show the bench guys as well. The ones who were taken off the bench. Oh yeah. All right, wait, let me, let me put it up. I don't have the whole team. I have the whole team. Why isn't my... Oh, yeah, I got a couple of red cards, man. Okay, let's go. Okay, all right. So we've got... So we've got all these players, right? You see this guy? High, right? Okay. Now, let's compare all of them, okay? This guy's natural fitness is 15, okay? This guy's natural fitness is... 16. This guy's natural fitness is 18. That's not too bad. And this guy's natural fitness is if they're all about the same, that's not too bad. Okay, 13. Alright. 13, 11 were great. Okay, this one we can excuse. See, this is how the game has to operate. Now, a player with high natural fitness or medium, I think 12 is borderline. Okay. But if he has a low work rate, if he has a low work rate, good stamina, and low natural fitness, Nesto Groen should not be recovering quickly between games. If his natural fitness is lower than, let's say, 10, for example, right? So 11 or 12, he should be lower. Secondly, because his work rate is so low, he won't press all the time. So this is what I expect to see in the game, right? He might press for the first 15 or 20 minutes, but then I will slowly see him dropping off, right? He won't be pressing as much. So this is what I want to see, as opposed to maybe somebody else who's got high work rate, high natural fitness, and high stamina. So, but when I was watching the game, right, I didn't get the sense that that was actually happening. So, I I think as I've got to dial it up and do like um like that it, it should be very visible even during the first forty five minutes. If I was to do high pressing for forty five minutes, right. I want to see my Nesto grow in. Stop pressing. Now, I won't say stop pressing. More like, you know, like jog to do a press. Right? Because do you ever see a game of football where somebody actually stops running around? I mean, unless they are Roy Carroll, Andy Carroll, okay? Unless they're Andy Carroll. Because Andy Carroll, or, you know, Peter Crouch, like when they, when, they were, when they were quite old, right? So, 
34 year old player you will see older players doing that but like last weekend i was watching two teams playing 19 minutes everybody's running around like you know you see them running around of course they as a as an athlete you learn to run in two styles what is your sprint and the other was your recovery run right your your recovery run is where you actually rec you're actually recovering right you're breathing you 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 train your breathing you learn your breathing techniques and how to recover how to run and you know regain your fitness level so that you can sprint again so normally what we see is those kind of runs you know pretty common so you don't really often see a player stop running so much so what i'm expecting to see and I, if you guys feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, right? I, I, I want to see players not press sometimes. Right? That would be a clear sign that a player is really tired. Or during um during a set piece, for example, you're about to take the set piece, right? Because this is when we see it in set pieces as well. Like, you know, oh man, I'm so tired. Hands on the hips. Right? You see the hands on the hips, you know a player is tired. Because that's body language, right? You can't run away from that. When a player is tired, no matter how world class you are your hands on the hips uh, you see that happening quite common you know, it's quite common in football so that's those are the things I want to see a bit more of so I, I wasn't too impressed with the pressing I thought it felt like easy mode to me <laughs> yeah that's the best way to put it but let's also let's manage our expectations at Sheffield United <laughs> recently relegated to the championship not Ipswich Town Still, you don't know which uh, big uh, you know, or older athletic, right? So, <laughs> I don't know if they're on this, watching the stream right now. I just mentioned two clubs that are playing a, a game against each other soon. The combination of the system and the individual guy was mixed. Yeah, true. That's true. Yeah. Oh, Bellerin got loan or soul, right? Oh, man, that's so sad. How how the heck do you can... I mean, I don't understand how Arsenal cannot use Hector Bellerin. It's like, at one point, right, when Arsenal used to play Liverpool, right, I used, I used to shit, man, when I would see Hector Bellerin running down my flanks. Yeah, you understand staff meetings already kind of do that once a month where I look at training. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, if they have that feature, it would be good. Risky, Pradana. Look, it's not the... No, you have to understand one thing, no Risky, right? There's no one owner of... Uh, of uh, Newcastle Football Club anymore. Newcastle Football Club is now owned by a bloody country. That guy at the top who comes is representing a country now. So let's just, let me put things in perspective for you, okay? You got uh, the Qatar Fund, right? That is running Man City. It's not just one joker, no. It's like the investment arm of an entire country sitting beside with all the money. So that when he goes back to Qatar, he's going to meet all the other guys sitting in the bottom routine and they go like, you know, we should have Ronaldo in our team, you know? Yeah. We need money for Ronaldo. But we don't have no money. We're going to get around these bloody financial fair play rules. How do we get around these financial fair play rules? Yes. We shall, uh, yes, let's build a little uh, community center in Newcastle. Huh? We'll build it out there. Yeah, no worries. It's just a cost. We'll just transfer it. One of our, you know, lackey companies. We'll put about 120 million. But building it costs 20 million. It's okay. The other 100 can go into a service that Man City can charge for the fees. Huh? How's that sound? Eh? Now you get 100 million. Okay, go and get Ronaldo. You think this is not going to happen? If, it's, if it is not happening, right? I'm the Pope that smokes dope. Half of them, look at uh, how City finance, show me how Man City makes money of gate revenue TV deals that is equal to, okay, the profits that they generate, okay, that allows them to get that much of a kitty for their transfer chest. It's not happening. Okay, so there's a lot of shady deals going on, brothers and sisters of the world. And that's what's going to happen in Newcastle. So, more countries are gonna get so. I mean, why why don't we stop this? You know, let's just, let's just put all the, every single English cup for sale. Let's do that, man. I mean, US wants an English cup. They should take. What club does uh, Zealand like? Chelsea. Yeah, uh, Roman Abramovich is not a country; he's a person. So that's different. So yeah, maybe America should buy Chelsea, 
And then uh, what about um, Manchester United? Maybe Manchester United should also be sold. I think to Malaysia. Because this is what's happening, right? That's, I, I'm, I might be a cynic, but that's really the reality right now that's happening. How do you be how do you be a three at the back tactic? How do you make a three at the back tactic? It's simple. A three at the back tactic, all you gotta do is worry about this guy. Three at the back tactics, you don't worry about these. You worry about these two, yes, because you need them to tackle like. But this guy is the key to a three at the back tactic. If you get this player wrong, you're screwed. Because this guy is always going to come out first to do all win all the hitters, right? So this guy has to have the highest anticipation in that team. He's got to be able to read the game. If you don't get the right player, you will struggle with three at the back. But three at the backs are not that difficult to set up. They're quite straightforward in this uh, in this uh, setup. I mean, most of these tactics quite quite straightforward. I'm uh, sorry about the, my little my little rant about uh, all these clubs. I do apologize, guys. But that's a re I mean, in, I mean, I, I'm not gonna take. I'm not gonna say I was. Uh, I'm not taking it back though. I'm apologizing for my rant. But I'm not taking it back. <laughs> oh, very nice apology, is it? I oh, mean, that's when that's who I am. I speak the truth. And if as if SI's game is shy, right? There's a promise to deliver. <laughs> you see my reaction, man. <laughs> the last time I what, what was the last the last time I said this game was designed by a non-gamer. I actually said that in the SI meeting. I actually told that SI stuff. Oh, I didn't know. I thought after that, I'll be unfriended by all the SI guys. But apparently, I wasn't. Yeah. So, I started getting emails, man. Okay, let's go, boys and girls. Let's do this. We have to beat this team in order for us to have a small chance of making it out of this group. Man. Look at that. Six. This is the decider, man. We have to win. Marseille should win their last game. Young boys have been, yeah, they have been literally tearing this league apart. Okay, what a, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, Cantona, ooh, ah, what a short corner routine. Biko scores, holy cow, this deflected all the way, this deflected all the way. Look at this. All right, first we pass it to him. Okay, I, he's marking me. Okay, I got it. Okay, who you, I, I'm, can you give it to me? All right, oh, shit, took a deflection. Oh, oh man, right at the critical moment where they put the block in, there was a deflection. You just like the feature of data. I love the I love the whole idea. I love the idea of data, but depends on the data that I get. So I'm not saying anything about it just yet, right? So I'm holding back my comments until I see. Oh, he dig the ball and he hit the bloody post. Oh, we get a second goal. We're home free, guys. We get young boys ready to win. They already qualified. So thank you for qualifying. Marseille are losing to us. Oh, straight win. I mean, we we through we uh, had a very uh, dodgy performance in this group. Remember, we were going through a bad spell, right? I was messing around with my tactics too much. Okay, again, again, again. Oh, oh man, this is too nice. How come I don't do this kind of corner routines when I'm playing draft board? Zifuik to Gabia. Gabia puts one over the top. Oh, that's well read by the defense. I played football in the youth and when we were tight, we could, wouldn't be as aggressive for five. Yeah, you need a recovery period, right? So, that's going to have to be... You can't just keep running forever. Even when you're 17, 18 years old, like, you can't run for 45 minutes at 100 kilometers per hour. So, yeah. So, I, so if I play FM22 and I see Erling Haaland running at me just like he did at the start of the game, and he's been doing that every for every single highlight. Naturally, I'll be like, what the hell is going on? But then we don't see the game in full, right? That's a problem. Therein lies the problem. So in order for you to make a, a educated or really fair assessment of whether a player has been, you know, recovering his runs, you have to watch the whole game in full. And how many of us actually do that? Oi, this Ruben Bian Blanco's hands are hurting from that stinger of a shot he just had to defend against. Okay, all right. We have to like, okay, let's just give the boys a bit of encouragement. Lima seems to be wanting to pick a fight with somebody. Well, apparently now he's just contented or uninterested. Uninterested, uninterested. Okay, well, you want that? Okay, fine. 
I'm encouraging they want to be uninterested. Next time I'll just shout at them. Guys, these goals we're scoring. Seriously. Is there no defending going on right now? Read one to Divisio. Slice it. Okay. FYI. Let me ask, okay. How many of you, okay, I want to ask you all a question, right? We're going to switch this to 2D. I'm going to give you a very simple question. I'm going to ask you a very simple question, and I want you to type it in chat as A, B, or C, okay? All right. Okay. When you do your set pieces for throw-ins, okay, or A or B, is there a specific area those throw-ins happen in, or does it happen anywhere? If, it's, if you say it's a specific area where the strains will be triggered, type in A. If you don't know the answer, type in B. Is there a specific re area? I want to know whether you guys know the answer. Because I can, I'm can i going to give you an answer that's based on 100% fact. Verified by SI themselves. Yeah, it's Chico. They all they, uh, they didn't show you the set piece routine, right? It's all default. Okay, Thomas says it's A. There's a specific area. A. Okay. Okay, that's risky. Okay, I'm gonna wait for three of you. Four. B. Emmanuel doesn't know. Daniel says A. Okay, there's a specific area. Alright, very good. So we got a few specific areas here, okay? Okay, so three of you have named a specific area. So I'm gonna ask you a question. All right, where is the throwing? Where does the throwing get triggered? So if you if I put my mouse in the area, if you think that's the area, press A. See the mouse here? It's here. If this is the area, type in A. If it's not the area, type in B. So if this is the area where your throwings get triggered, type in A. If it's not the area, type in B. Sorry, Troy. <laughs> so bloody. Okay. All right. So that's how you start tapping in A. That's interesting. Okay. All right. I'm talking about set pieces. Huh? Not talking about your... I'm only talking about set pieces. A. You say it's A. I want to say it's A. A. All you say is A. Okay, guys. Guess what? It's not here. Your set pieces only kick in here it's called the, you have to take the pitch right you have to divide it into three parts one third middle third and final third right your throw-ins only get triggered in this third in your lower third so your player has to be standing here when your player is standing here that is when your set your set pieces or throw-ins get triggered and any other point on this page is not your set pieces. It's got nothing to do with your set pieces. Right? So all this is your, your tactic, your natural tactic that you're using, where your players might be standing, whatever they share, whatever positions they're in. So this is the only place. So this is so your, if you do your set pieces for your attacking throwings, right? It's only here, the lower third. Here, all oh, oh, this area, jack shit. The only other place is here. Your lower third throwings. That's it. So in case you guys didn't know that, because I, I know people always ask me, you know, hey, my throw-ins not working. I'm right, standing there. Throw-in not working. Say, Dude, your throw-in doesn't work until it's there. This is a white free kick. Oh, thank you very much. So like if I'm looking at my throw-ins, like, if it's here, I know it's not my set piece throw-in. I got nothing to do with this. Oh, this is like the AI's throw-in. Huh? Whatever it, the SI put into for the throw-in comes in there. So I always try to make sure that, you know, like, I, there's nothing you can do, right? Is there anything you can do? Nah. Say la vie. Was that Groen running away? Look, it, oh, he's hurt. Oh, my leg. Oh, baby, my leg. Oh, I'm, you know, this guy is more like he's having constipation, man. It's like, I, I, I need to go to the toilet. I need to go to the toilet. He's shaking. He's like, I'm, I need to go to the loo. <laughs> I mean, some of these animations can be improved. That, this is a constipated animation. <laughs> because send him to, I gotta give this guy a break, man. And that's still great having an excellent game. Yeah, you go and have a rest, eh? 
scoring back is okay we don't we let him carry on well, his natural fitness is we give this uh, we give Nest oh no 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 Daljit you see 46 I minutes mean, don't be an idiot this is how I lose games take players off before half time let him carry on playing for the least another uh, what 15 15 minutes 20 minutes then take him off 2-0 up anything can still happen with Sharon the silver we lost to young boys no? guys this is my short corner routine man what are they doing? Are they done? These kind of goals are happening towards the end of FM21. Uh, is this like the bloody ultimate tease? No? The ultimate tease, okay, guys. He turns, gives it to the silver, does it dances past one? He's. Nice. Herrero, Epshia. Neto, back to his Herrera, Puget, whatever your name is, okay, and gives you the Ajeti Zifuk. Oh, it's blocked. Divizio, the playmaker, gets the ball. Oh, he's on his own. He's, he's going to have to do everything by himself. He gets in the box, holds up the ball. Oh! Ah, these young boys are not here to, they're not here to play football. They're here to they already qualified, so they don't have to do anything. So I think since they're not doing anything, we'll just rest our players. Take off Nesto growing just on just before he gets his hat trick. Oh man, let him have his hat trick. Why do you have to go and score another goal? <laughs> Holy hell. Okay, so what, who are you gonna be on? Joey? I need to rest him. Okay, we get out to the 65th minute. Now we do I'm gonna do a Yogan clock. <laughs> right, okay. That's it. So that is Fitz Jim. I have no idea who he is. Totally new name on the starting 11. I think we're going to give him a chance to play. Ridwan had an injury, so yeah, we'll take him out. Joey, or well, apparently Joey doesn't like Ridwan very much. Oh, now it's okay. He's just becoming complacent. That's about it. Okay, now we're going to shout at the boys and demand more. Make everybody a bit more agitated. <laughs> How would you set up a tree at the back with a double DM? For FM21 or FM22? They're the same, right? I have a tree at the back system. Um, tree at the back. You can play with a halfback. You can play with Segundo Volante, right? You can play with wingers, wingers. I've got one system that's very, very strong. Um, but I stopped using it because... I'm using it. Because you got this defense is very, very strong. What you should do is I'll just let this game finish and I'll explain. Okay, done. All right, we're not going to change my tactic. We're just going to explain it without creating a tactic. All right, so okay, essentially what happens is you got these two roles, right? You're going to drop them into this hole. So what you're going to have is one, you can play with one halfback, one register. Right, that's one option. Or, depending on how you want to align it with your front tree. If you, what I normally do is I have this tree and I put two here, right? When I have two like this, both of these guys are told to stay wider. Uh, if your boys are good on the ball and they are, um, you can play as ball playing defenders, then I'll add dribble more to a ball playing defender because I need him to carry the ball. And I'll tell you why next. So because these two guys are here, you need players to bring the ball. And usually the ball playing defenders will do that. So you bring the ball playing defenders. What I normally do in these two positions is put a winger. You can play a winger. You can play a defensive winger. I personally prefer wingers because wingers are going to get up and down the flanks really aggressively because I've got five at the back. They're not going to come through my middle, right? Because i got two DMs. How, you know, like, oh, they literally need a tank to come through my middle. But going down the flanks is going to be kind of easy. If I play defensive wingers or wingbacks, it's going to be too easy because then my players are always sitting and defending. So instead of me defending, I don't make the opposition defense. So I play with wingers. Now, the advantage of playing with wingers is your wingers are, because you're playing with wingers and you're playing high up the pitch, 
you're going to intercept a lot of the balls played out to their fullbacks because your wingers are always going to try and anticipate the fullback pass, right? Especially when they do prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So you got this lineup is wingers, right? Okay. Wingers on support, wingers, uh, generally wingers on support is, are fine, right? Okay. Now, what about the three in front? Now, the three in front, if it's a strikers, you probably use the same combination. Though I would probably wouldn't play strikers in that setup because you, you don't really want a striker system so far back. So if you're playing a striker system, what I would do is, uh, if, yeah, I wouldn't do two DMs in a striker system. It just doesn't make too much sense. Uh, but I'll have three strikers. Okay. Because I'm playing wingers, I will not have anybody else on the flanks, right? I'll let the wingers dominate the flanks and put a lot of pressure on their fullbacks. Instead, what I'll do is a trident. So I can either play with one um, AM in the middle and two strikers. A good strike, you you want strikers that, both these strikers to be able to move into the channels because these, whenever they have moved into the channels, they drift this way and they support the the winger that's coming on the flank. So sometimes you drop a diagonal, this guy might do a diagonal to this side of the pitch, right? Then this winger is this striker is just gonna drift out wide to help the winger when he gets the ball, which encourages the other two to get inside the box. Right? So you what you want is a like you can play uh eight if you're not so certain you want a hook, then you can play a hook like an engage, you can play the AM and support. If you're very confident with your team, you, you know your team has the ability, especially if you're if you're the sort that is gonna play a Segundo Volante here, we get further forward. So if you can have a cheating Segundo Valante. There's a cheating Segundo. I mean, I, I call it a cheat because I dis, I disagree, I mean, I disagree with SI when they gave us a Segundo Valante with the option to get further forward on support duty. I mean, what's the difference then between him and a Segundo Valante and attack? The only difference is the Segundo Valante on support can actually come back and help you defend in a deeper position, right? So, so you can play with Segundo Valante halfback, right? Or you can go with... Uh, um, halfback Regista, I've done that many times. I love that combination because it's very, it's a very competitive combination because the halfback helps you defend. The Regista actually roams and brings the ball forward and takes part in the attacking transitions. Uh, the Segundo Volante, the difference, if you don't have that kind of a play, you don't have a playmaker kind of play in that mold and use the Segundo Volante, the Segundo Volante is just basically a box-to-box -box midfielder but plays in a deeper position. And then up top, you can play with a 2-1 combination, which is actually also quite good because, you know, there are two, you're two players in the set. If you play a 2-1, like the men's, uh, Chelsea 2-1s, right? I don't know if I got a 2-1 here. So if, I don't have a 2-1. So if you play like with a 2-1, which is two strikers and one guy here, tell these two strikers to roam from position. Right? If they roam from position and move into channels, they will go either side to, to help the wingers out. And then the striker can be... And the striker usually uh, in this setup when I have uh, these two roles in the middle, uh, like a shadow striker at AMA, then I get the one on top to be a uh, DLFS on support or a pressing for the support. So there are a lot of ways to do this. But that formation you just spoke to me about with the two DMs is very, very fun. I played that with uh, my, um, was it? I think it was Dundee, right? At the start of FM20. Uh, after, the, after they put out the patch, I was playing with it for quite a while. Yeah. On a uh, on Twitch, if I'm not mistaken, that was a very strong tactic. If we had one goal, uh, and I don't play out, of, I don't play out of defense. It's kind of fun. I tell you why. When you play out of defense, those those DMs actually drop deeper, right? You don't need them to drop deeper because they are DMs. Why do you want them to drop deeper? You got three bloody defenders in front of you. So who the hell do you? You don't need that anymore. So don't play out of defense, right? When you don't play our defense, the ball playing defender gets the ball. Guess who he passes it to? The winger. What do you think the winger is going to do with the ball? If you play early cross, the winger is going to give deliver the ball straight to the box. You got three pass. You got what? Two pass move. Goalkeeper, ball playing defender, winger, assist. It's a very fun tactic. Yeah. When I'm trying short corner the first time, I score about four goals. Ah, short corner routines are fun. When the AI plays them, we don't ever let their wing backs get high up the pitch. The trick about these uh three at the back systems is they're bottom they're bottom heavy but top light, right? So they need to bring their entire army and their reserves all into your country before they can attack you, right? They got no advanced force. So bottom heavy systems, you don't give them time to bring these two guys up the pitch. So what you do is you play higher up the pitch, you dominate play. 
Yeah, all you need to do is like a standard line of engagement, uh, much higher line, uh, standard, uh, sorry, standard defensive line, higher line of engagement. Uh, play with wingers, try and put pressure. You're like a 4-3-3 system. If you play like a narrow system, like a 4-3-1-2, and you face a back three system, then you have to be a bit more aggressive. You have to you have to take the game to them with your wing backs. The team that is able to dominate with their wing backs normally wins in those kind of matches. But if you play, we have to be careful as well, right? Don't push everything up. Uh, you know, like your two defenders can get caught with the ball over the top by a, you know. So don't forget to ask your defenders to tight mark their lone striker. Because a lone striker, if he gets away with the ball, you could be in trouble. That's holiday, man. Come on. That's holiday to the next match. Do you know that there's a you know that there's an achievement, right? In this game of football manager, where to, for the longest uh, save you've ever done. Okay. Let's say if you've done a save, you, you if you plan to break get the Guinness uh book of world right, go into the Guinness Book of World Records by having the longest FM save, right? Do you know if you holiday too much, like even like holiday like this, right? It doesn't go into it, they, they actually they you have to send the file back to SI, right? SI will check. Oh, you did holiday quite a lot, so we gotta take away all the holiday periods to find out the total number of days he actually played. <laughs> so, yeah, sad, huh? As I have ways, ways or means, and there are ways and means to find out. Darby declare interest. What the hell is everybody doing? Right. Not fair. You're one of my players. That's because they're scoring goals finally. We've broken our, our bad streak. Let's not talk about that too much, right? <laughs> everybody wants Joey, you know. Rosu, Eta, Deme, Joss. Okay, we can give. I mean, who are we playing? We're playing here and win. Okay. I mean, there's a. Team report, senior squad. There's no like this is an analyst report for Huron Win. Okay, so uh there are goals per game. Not doing too badly, right? XG per game. Pretty much bang on average. You concede. They don't concede so many goals. Look at the conceding. They concede less than the opposition. They're passing, they do pretty well in terms of giving up. In terms of this, the irrevocable average. No? They got one of the best defenses, you can see this. And then they score like, oh my goodness, they are a goal scoring machine, man. They are a goal. They are, this team is not bad. You gotta give them some due respect so we cannot rest players for this game. Okay, Divisio, come. Okay, uh, Biko, come here. All right, Joss, no, you're not playing. Uh, Vinesto, you're coming. I, I thought I wanted to rest all my players, but that would be risky. Conrad, Conrad, Conrad. I think I can put Conrad here, late here. Okay, that's it. Alice Stowe, no. Um, where is that? Okay, let's just do this like that. Okay, where is Mr. Elmin Fazlik? Okay, he's here. Droglan Magni. Okay, we'll put you here. No? We'll put you here. Okay, done. All right, we've got Divizio, Fazli, Lema, Joey, Biko, Demir. Okay. Okay. Um, Lanvier is still injured. You know, he can play here. Then I can shift. I can, if Lanvier is play, if this guy is fit, he can play here. Then I can move him into midfield and push him here. No worries, man. Daniel, anytime. I think in case you guys are wondering, right? This is yeah, opposition instructions. These are my opposition. Never change my opposition instructions. These are my standard opposition instructions I'll be using for FM22 as well. The logic is very simple. See this guy's right foot? I close him down on the left. All right. So like a is is to make sure that they don't um it, they find it hard to play the ball down the flanks. But I'm hoping that they improve this for F FM uh, in terms of the triggers, meaning um, when a player is like turn his back, I want my players to press him, that kind of thing. That's what I mean by trigger. All right. Why is he maximum of 75 minutes? Untaro is not that good yet. Alas, the way he's supposed to be my DM, but he's kind of a waste of space. Okay, let's go.
Let's go, babies. Touch cup. Okay. Out of the gate, let's encourage the boys. Oh, look at that. He didn't even already have one shot. From here, even. Holy cow. That first shot is a dangerous shot. 0 0.20 is pretty good chance. Ours is quite a sad man compared to theirs. Ours is like on the edge of the box. 0 0.22 second one. Okay. This is not looking good. Alright, this this is the this one formation I worry about the most. Because they got this 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 DM here. They can give me a problem in this setup. Okay, we're gonna not pass it this way, dribble less, give the ball a bit more. Um I'm gonna do this as well. Okay. Previsio, nice pass. Lima, Nina. Oh, it's disallowed. There's no way that was gonna happen. But at least the highlight shows me getting a disallowed goal. <laughs> We had to change things around because I wasn't like they're getting all the shots, right? It just uh then our possession wasn't so good. Now we turn things around with a few tweaks. Okay, so we can demand more from the boys now. And then towards the end of the first half, we're just gonna go very attacking. This is where your set pieces come in. Yeah, they see where he is in. That is my set. This will be my set piece routine. Oh Nick. Guacamole. The guy just lost. Oh, he's turned. Martins has turned the... Oh, Roger makes a good save. Oh, man. Come on. Chula. Joey's header. Okay. Go, Groen. Oh, man. Towards the end of the first half. Pushing for a goal. I'm not going to change the tactics. They're too lazy to change tactics. Uh, I'm just going to drop down the attacking. Uh, they got two inverted wingers dropping in, trying to reduce this advance forward, right? So they got Mazala working inverted winger. This... DLP wing back, they got a more aggressive uh, left flank. Okay. And that's okay, we'll just go down their right then. Okay, Divisio to grow in. Good movement. Whoa! Oh, what a goal. What a goal. What a goal. Sweetness. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do now is something less. Okay, we can dial this guy down. Because this I gotta respect this team. This team knows what it's doing. Most of the other teams are a bit easier for us to beat. This team is different. <laughs> one of the teams that's beaten us in the league this season is Hiranween. And Hiranween have got one of the top academies in Holland compared. I mean it's just like IX, right? I I even have their training. The, the actual book that they use for training their young players, there's a whole like explanation. I put it in my guide last season, right? I took excerpts from the book to put it into my uh, my training. The F, the football manager guide I give to the community, the Discord group, right? So, I, so it's in there. So I, I took out excerpts from their training. How they how they train uh, youth players exactly. So I, what I did was I actually modeled some of their training programs to you guys. It's a, like a min-max approach. Instead of my complete, there's one like complete training schedule, which is my lead, my balanced one, which I use myself. And there's one for min maxing, right? So you want the you want your players, your young players, to be of a certain category uh, of a certain certain uh, kind. I don't like this. This is this is not good. 
I don't like this. I don't like this, man. This I knew it. I did. Damn it. <laughs> I knew it. Come on. Come on, Roger. Roger, you gotta do this, man. Don't make me have to change it. Okay, well, look. I don't care. After this, we're going back to wing back on attack. You gotta put the pressure on them. Oh, sheesh. 1-1. One, one. <laughs> and then Metin Turk. Uh, four at the backs is not so good. For, yeah, they should still be good. I mean... The 433 is still a very solid system, right? It's a very nice balanced system. I mean, you gotta think about how you're gonna get this this role a bit more attacking. This in this setup, the Mazala is quite attacking. So the Mazala is on attack, the wing bears support. This guy's on inverted winger, supposedly getting a lot of these overloads uh happening on that side of the pitch. So if you if you you can still make those kind of good tactics, the 4 2 trail is still viable. Just because everybody's going to be... ah, Just because everybody's playing with a back tree doesn't mean that back tree systems are going to be the best because back trees have one big vulnerability is their flanks. Okay, we're going to have to send them both up the pitch now. Okay, we've got to think about this guy. I mean, I don't want to take him off. But I can always put Hefty on for him. Okay, so what we're going to do is Amin is not playing well. Or rather, he's he's losing the he's losing the plot day. Eh? Uh, we'll bring on Hefty. Okay, push Hefty here. Okay. You remember uh, when we were watching the? You guys were asking, right? Some guys were asking on the stream. They saw this cogwheel and wondering what the cogwheel was. This is just the opposition analysis of the other team, right? So, you do the heat map. Right, and you remove this. Okay, and this is your heat map, right? So this is how you are performing. Right, that's your my way is your pressure coming. My my pressure points are all on the right, and then you if you press this cog wheel, you see the pressure points. So we're all fighting in the same areas. This is the big battle. This side is the the side the side of the pitch I should be focused on. Okay, so so I'm, that's what one of the reasons why I'm releasing this guy now. Yeah, on. Okay, last couple of minutes. Let's just put it out to very attacking. Ah, it's too late to do a shot. It won't kick in. If you go into extra time, that's what I'm going to do it. 7.0, 7 7.2. 7 this wing back is just not having a good game. Joey is also, Joey is also not having a good game. The silver for Colina? No, I'm going to ignore this first. Okay, extra time. I think I know what to do. The silver is tired already. You're going to bring all the story. Start the game. Let's go. Hey, go on, fit Joker here. Hope he hopefully, put some pressure. They are, I was always concerned about Hiran Veen. Hiran Veen are a good team. Okay, we we'll take. Okay, Joey, go. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Biko is my. Ah, damn it. Biko read the danger again. Growen. There, are the wing backs all the way. That's what I want to see. Get in. Cross. Ugh, two one. Okay, good. Now we're not gonna change things. That left flank was vulnerable. You see, sometimes right, I'm very lazy, right? I don't show you guys all this stuff. But like, this is how you use to find out where to attack. Okay. Right. So this this is one way of identifying a weak spot in a tactic. Because sometimes it's like you're beating your head against the wall, right? Right. So now what we're gonna do is we know that they, they are actually see okay, sports roll course. See this analysis here? This is your team, right? This is their team. So a lot of the battles are happening on the same side of the pitch for us, right? So what I'm going to do now, okay, remove this opposition analysis, go back to my tactics. I'm going to turn him back to wing on support. Okay. And yeah, maybe if I wanted to, I'd just push him away. Okay, so if I, I just want to secure the win, I can. I just push him here. Okay. Make it harder for them to play the ball out. To that side of the pitch, right? So the AP, where the AP is in the wing back. So I put this winger just here, just to see out the game. And now, I'm still very attacking mentality. I'll just drop it out of attacking mentality. You know, just jack up this time wasting. Okay. And, okay, so far so good. 
So far, so good. Come on, come on, come on. Get to the ball. Thank you very much. Late. What a pass to FT. Gets inside the box. Good. Lamer. Grow it. Ooh, that was close. Okay, now we are going to regroup. <laughs> Something else I need to do. Okay, roll it out. Everything I can do to... Uh, to... Um, why? Why can't I come out of this? I never... I sometimes don't understand why. I have to come out just to get the, to the confirm button change. Okay. Joey went Roglan. Okay, fine. Get a defend, proper defender in and change that defender to a... Uh, bo uh, central defender on cover. <laughs> Grow for Kalina, do it. Okay. Fresh legs. Alright. Now we come in here. Tempo lower. Lower. Dribble. Do, 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 do. Play our defense is okay. Time wasting. Dribble less. Done. Okay. Out of possession, standard defense. Yeah, don't use the offside trap. That when they don't use the offside trap, you know what happens? The players drop. Instead of trying to catch somebody out, they actually drop, trying to keep up with the defenders. So yeah, they don't try to catch players offside. So it's safer than playing the offside trap. Ah, <laughs> we, well, we, we tactically outplayed them, man. For once, we were, we were lucky, you know. This game, we were damn lucky. We had to use every single tool that's available in the game just to see how the win. Sheesh, man. We gotta, because look at this run we had. We threw away everything. All our hard work at the start, right? One, two wins and then I started, I don't know what I started doing. I mean, I was you know, probably messing with tactics as I usually do. We had to get back our winning ways. Now we're going to play one. We lost to all these teams. Look at that. FC to, at home, we lost to them. Agma, we lost to them. I, I can't understand how I lose to Den Haag and Nick Breda. All these teams, I should be beating them. Man. Young boys away, we lost to them. I think I was, I must have been smoking dope. I, I must have been drunk or some shit like that, man. Yeah, here we go. So, I mean, do you, I mean, I know that uh, when it came to the F, the football manager stream, right? I was not like, where is this? Oh, no, 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 no. There's no like, enjoy, enjoy, don't play, don't go for training. What the hell? What's all this, man? What's wrong with my ass, man? I don't think I set up the train for this week. Our defensive shape. Okay. Full week of rest. They give us, and they give us games. Okay, attacking movement, attacking movement. Okay, we'll just do um, general match, recover, match review. And then we'll do physical recovery. Then we just do not do the match preparation, get defensive shape, attacking movement. All right, that should be fine. We won't, we won't wear our players out. They, they can have one full wheel of rest. We give them a such. Then make them do some community outreach progress. You think oh, you're gonna get free time, is it? <laughs> then they're gonna meet the fans. Okay. Hey, cautious, you see? Bloody hell. I should be beating these teams, but wasn't playing well. So, like the live stream for a football manager, what else what else did they show us, right? Okay. Uh I don't I don't think they showed us anything to do with scouting. Um Development of youth players, no nothing. All I all I saw is a, a bit, I mean the meetings, the games itself, the match engine. But the match engine, I like the animations. I like the way the tactics is a bit more intuitive. The tactics do feel a bit more intuitive. Like, you know, it's like what I expect to see. Um, I know I noticed the underlapping and overlapping is slightly different, right? So we'll have to play the game and I'll have to explain it when we are playing the game. Okay, late. 
Lema. Okay, this guy is just... The, the, he doesn't like playing here. He wants to be a defender. Okay. His life ambition was to be a defender by... Re <laughs> I, I'm playing him as a central midfielder. So he's... I, I don't know if he's happy. Things deserves no strong... So he's... Apparently he's not unhappy. Yeah, he's... Apparently he's not unhappy, you know. Yeah, he's not happy. Because if you look at this, right? Promises I made to him. That's the promises. There we go. Oh, no, no. It's part of his contract when I signed him. So, I'm kind of interested. I'm interested to know why he's not showing up. Yeah, he wants to play as a central defender. Not as a... Uh, not as a holding midfielder. Okay, this is it, man. Revenge time. Easy Alma beat us before. We have to beat them now. No, oh, sorry. We have to beat them in the Dutch Cup. So, meeting all the teams that beat us. That's good. Okay, now we can play this team that also beat us. Got off to a very rocky start. Now, now I've got to turn things around. We got, we're slowly climbing up. I mean, can you imagine? We fell all the way, you know. This way. Eight defeats, man. So far, we've we haven't accumulated a lot of draws. That's good news. So we just have to bounce our way back and just take points off everybody you now. So we can push ourselves into the into this position. So we are 20 we are 22 13 points still plenty of. Yeah. If we concentrate, we should be fine. Okay. Alright, submit the team. Divisio, Fazik, Mina, Da Silva, Groen, Biko, Joey, Etienne, Demi. Okay, fine. This 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 group is not too bad. We're gonna still use him. Okay. Um, I still want to use him. Yeah. Worst comes to worst, I push uh, Lamer into middle. I like Lamer going forward, but ball winner, I guess. I the the reason why I don't want to use him, but so far he's been playing quite well in that position. Ah oh, well, let's not that. Let's not delay. Let's get Kraken. And we haven't, I haven't seen, why would doesn't SI do a stream where they do draft mode instead, right? Show us what draft mode is like. Say, play, um, play with five people in five different countries, right? That'll be fun. Then if, whether there are any new features for draft mode, why didn't you do that? I will, I'll volunteer myself easily. I'm, I, I'm on the other side of the world. But I guess the problem is when you do draft mode, you have to look at the epic servers because the servers play a part in draft mode how the servers are handling the data right so I don't think SI want to do it again I mean the system that is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass okay alright so they're not coming up the pitch yeah, like we... I mean this is a bit too early you can't really tell see this you can't really tell see the heat map just tells you where we are most of the game is being played so far up the pitch for us alright so when you do this, show a position, you see this, now you see they are also not playing very high up the pitch. Like, right? you see this? They're literally camping on the, uh, the left hand side, this side of the pitch, right? So, okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to try something again based on this, right? Just go out there and just go, hey man, let's just take the game to them. Let's just shoot one guy down that flank, the, other, the left flank. Let's see what happens. One shot already. Come on, read one. We go. Read one and see the highlight comes out on the side of the pitch. Come on, go, go, go. No, force, put some pressure. Put some pressure. Thank you very much. Okay, Demir with the ball slides it to Lema. Lema looks, ah, that's not the pass I wanted to see. All right, okay, okay, okay. They're trying to, but these guys are not giving us any space. So we're going to drop, drop, drop. And then we're going to go low. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm going to have to beat this team today. Okay, late. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, again. Yeah, not doing too badly. Again, it's a hoof the hoof the down the line. But this is some this is even better. Oh, this is even better. Go! Keeper's mistake. Send uh, spend enough time fishing and you finally catch a fish. <laughs> That's what we're doing, right? Long ball forward. Let's go fishing. <laughs> That's what. Whee! 
Then he finally worked. Bloody keeper came out. Because nobody else is dropping deep to help him out. <laughs> guys are like, guys calling his players. What now? What's wrong with you guys? Oh, wait, why can't you come and get these balls, man? <laughs> oh, I love it when a plan comes together. All right, so he's doing well. Okay, we did enough pressure. Okay, let's look at the heat maps again. All right, okay. Two opposition us. What's happening right now, right? So, so this is uh, opposition. Take this away. This is us, right? This is us and them, okay? So still, bigger presence. But now you see this? Slowly getting brighter. Slowly getting brighter. But let's just... Uh, Keep Ridwan on attack for the time being. This guy is holding position, so it's not that bad, right? Because he holds position, I can afford to release this role. And I'm not using him as a ball. I'm not using these two guys as ball playing defenders. So the risk of us, you know, running Harry, you know, Helter Skelter with these two boys is it's not that bad. But I'm a bit, a bit uh, bothered by the fact that we've only generated one shot on target. Mina drops the drops the come on and look at him, man. He's going. Hey, we heard Red One is on the left flank, right? Yeah, he's attacking. Okay, I'm gonna look for him now. And they're all lining up for a shot. Oh my goodness. Hey, look at this. This guy is very unhappy. He's like, what the hell is going on, man, today? <laughs> this guy is just bobbing down, he's making us defend. Us telling he's having a good game, 6.9. Alright, we we're just not happy. Alright. They should, they should, they should do something more. Yeah, Biko, Ridwan, DLP, Bowenie midfielder. We got okay. That Silver is not having a good game. So what we're gonna do is, uh, well, six point four to six point five is okay. Mm. Okay, what I'm gonna, well, Lima and Fazlik, not too much to separate these two as well. Okay, we're gonna demand more from the boys. Lema to Mina. Mina. Mina keeps knocking it forward. <laughs> this fishing expedition has keep sending my players on. It's, it's, it's about to... <laughs> damn it. We got fish. This is a damn good fishing trip. Man. We, keep, we keep hoofing the balls forward, right? And eventually, somebody makes a mistake. Right. It's a second keeper error. Can you believe it? The first time the keeper went out. Now the keeper takes a touch and he's in a state of panic because he's being closed down again. Yeah. And yeah, Joey is... What is that? What is wrong with all these boys? Compose, compose, compose. Lamer is at 6.4. Okay, Fazlik is playing well. Alright, we'll take Lamer off. Alright, bring this guy on. Uh, Drongolan off or Biko. Alright. Okay. That's two goals to the good. Simple football. Okay. Mina is... Actually, we don't, we don't use him as often, right? We'll just take him off. No, we'll just keep him on. All right. Look at these guys, man. Compared to my players, these guys are like super fit. It's because they haven't been pressing. They, they are playing a very low intensity tactic. You can tell from this, right? So they are playing a low intensity tactic. So what I'm going to do now is regroup. Uh, remove the outside trap. Do this. I'm just gonna just uh yeah I think we don't we don't need to do too much now. Let's just ease the game in. I mean I could drop mentality, man. My mentality should get my boys. Uh mentality should help. Wasting time. Okay, there we go, they change tactics. Okay. Alright, dribble less, pass into space here, early cross, done. Da Silva with uh Heda. To grow in. It's a third. 
Revenge. They beat us at home. He came there, we slapped them sideways a few times. Fishing trip. We got a revenge back on them. Okay, that's it. Change that player. Yeah, bloody AI. Wanna... It's very insulting when the AI wants to play 4 2 4 against me. Human play 4 2 4 against me, I get a bit worried. Because usually, guys, when you guys are playing the 4 2 4, you guys know what to do. The AI, when it's 4 2 4, just sometimes doesn't make any sense to me. It seems like a randomly thrown out attacking tactic without any thought given to it. Four nil. Oh, this was a nice goal. Very patiently done. We draw a mentality down to balance. So that you don't see that you know you don't see all those hoof nearly as many of those hoof, hoof balls as you saw earlier, right? And right, they gone back into defensive stance. Okay, not too bad. Four nil win. Okay, yeah, send the assistant. Okay, slowly, boys, slowly, we're getting ourselves back. Man, look at this fall from grace. And I'll climb back. Okay, we're getting back, we're getting back into a position, you know, we're putting ourselves back in a position of some respectability. Okay, we just have to. Hopefully we can beat Adio then how? Then we got this big top of the table clash. PSV are in Hoven against us. But, I mean, at this point I have to admit, it's going to be tough to beat PSV. I don't get it. No? I mean, why is there rest? Why does the game wreck think this is a rest period? It's quite mid-season break. Or well, the youth players have gone on a break. Then how? General performance for the season. Goals per game expected goals. are well below the league average, right? So we can expect them to be playing as, as defensively as possible. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, okay, we'll do is, uh, we'll just go to the game day. And then we'll just change on the game day itself. Just like, what, what have we been doing so far? Because we, they'll be coming in with a defensive tactic and they'll be sitting well back. I don't think they're going to be coming out, right? So let's, uh, let's go. All right, four three three inside forward wing uh, wing back. It doesn't look defensive to me. I think it's, this will be a cautious tactic. Mazala going this way. Mazala going this way to support the inside forward. Mazala coming this side. This is the more dangerous flank, right? Because they got a wing back overlapping. Where the Mazar and the winger are playing. Uh, ball playing defender, one guy hoofing the ball up. Complete forward. I mean, this is a counter-attacking for 4-3-3. Three, three. We're going to have a problem in the middle. Okay. Alright. We're going to go you on attack. Straight away. Uh, Sorry. Uh, we'll just change this back to support. Next match only. Wing back on attack. Um, remove the pass into space. Keep the ball. Low cross. And yeah. I sh we should go with this first. Okay, let's. Uh, Mina, the silver growers. Same starting. Same bunch of jokers are going to play the game. Am I Turkish? No. So, sorry, I'm not Turkish. I was not bought. I was... There's no Turkish in me. Although I gotta admit, I love Turkey. I've been to Istanbul. Beautiful food. <laughs> I was like in Turkey and I was so delicious, the food. I can't imagine my friends. My friends all went shopping. I was like, the moment we landed, the first thing they wanted to do was go shopping. I looked at them and I went like, are you completely insane? Wait, in Turkey and you want to go shopping first? Man, you guys have got no love for Turkey. I said, the first thing I'm going to do with Turkey is I'm going to go and eat in a Turkish restaurant and have my Turkish coffee and my Turkish food and everything and anything to do with Turkish stuff. 
I got a mental. I did see my... In fact, I hardly spent time with my friends because I, I thought they were just useless at touring Istanbul. So I did it on my own. So I went to sit... Oh man, I love... I, I, I wish to go back to Istanbul. I think it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Mina, do, 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 do. we're getting our revenge, guys, on all these teams that beat us early in the season. Now we're getting going back to give them a big punching. All these teams, they are the ones that bull they took points off me because I don't know, maybe I was something was wrong with me. The analysis is still early in the game. You can't see, see this analysis doesn't tell you anything right now when you start in the game, right? Uh, look at her. They, I, what did I say at the start of the game? These guys are not coming out. Right, they're literally not going to stay exactly where they are. They're like, the striker has gone like, I'm not coming, I'm, I'm not going, man. What attacks? We're not going to attack today. <laughs> striker, this is, this is purely counter-attacking. Right, they're sitting back and they're hoping to attack me. So that's one of the reasons why I want to unleash my wing back. Put immediate pressure on that team. Okay, we're keeping the ball. And I want to keep the ball because if, if I play against a team seated very deep like that, you can remember this is re relatively flat. Right? I'm not playing a 3 4 1 2. So, this is a very flat system. They can easily catch me uh, with a ball over the top. And come in, let's go inside here. One more time. And no change. Except now the extra. Yeah, this is because of my players. Right? You're still down at slightly higher. Okay, now it's a good thing. You don't, you don't, you don't want to come out of the box. Okay, fine. Okay, we'd run at you then. No more look. Uh, we'll run at them and just have some fun. Let's go. One yellow card here. <laughs> the players will be happy to see that the extra world attacking set pieces prior to the match is creating more chances for us. Really? Kamal Stalin. I've been watching you for a while. You should do a video about fantasy draft. Which tactics players we should use now, man? Fantasy draft. Trust me. There's no such thing as what tactics are best. I don't know. There are people who say, I'm probably the worst guy to tell you that. I'm one of the worst guys to ask for fantasy draft advice because there's several reasons why. First, I think that honestly, if you want to play fantasy draft, play a tactic you are familiar with and you know, the, the, the ways to change it because different players are going to play different systems. What are you going to do? What? So stick to one tactic and the tactic you are the most comfortable with. A good tactic to use in fantasy draft is actually the 4 2 3 1, the 4 4 2. I honestly will tell you this much. They are very versatile, but they're also very solid. Because the 4 2 3 1 is actually strong defensively. Most people don't seem to realize is how you use the two central midfielders. And then the 4 4 2 is the best, it's one of the best systems out there. If you know how to master a 4 4 2, you probably can give a lot of tactics problems because a 4 4 2 can change to a 4 2 4. Um, as far as strikeless systems are concerned, well, understanding how to play against a strikeless system is very important. Right? You're always going to meet some guy like me, you know, me playing, a, like I'm playing a strikeless system. You're always going to meet somebody like that. So strikeless systems don't like direct football. They don't. Strikeless systems want you to give the ball to them. But they don't like it when you can move the ball very quickly across the pitch over great lengths. So... You need to create systems that allow for that. Or you have to become one of those guys that plays uh, with a deep, uh, well, not with a deep system, but with DF. So you, you got to learn different play styles. You, so, and the, 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 knowing as many tactics as possible, understanding tactics is just not going to make you a good fantasy draft player as well. I'm not one, right? So um, the, my weakness is the draft itself. Because I lose concentration. And I am always thinking of tactic A, tactic B, tactic C, which is my biggest weakness, right? So when you play a fantasy draft, depending on the, the pool, like sometimes they tell you you cannot pick 20 players, right? When, you, when you're told that it's, your, it's a 20 player limit, please don't pick for multiple tactics. I know you will have the option of changing tactics. Yeah, it's good to find players with multiple positions, but always aim for playing one tactic. And chances are most of the time, Pick a tactic, you know, like a 4-2-3-1 is a good tactic. A 4-3-3 is a safe tactic, although I don't really like the 4-3-3 as much. Right. 4-3-3 can be good, but you need to know how to play it. Because when people play 4-3-3s, right, the, the DM base 4-3-3, right, a lot of people struggle to score goals. And there's a reason why, because they are too defensive with their 4-3-3s. 
So you have to learn learn how to. So I, telling a person what tactics, there's no such thing as what tactics to use. You have to understand the strengths and weaknesses of all different kinds of tactics. Like there, I played for my Brazilian box so many times in fancy draft. When I see a certain formation up against me, I play a Brazilian draft, a uh, Brazilian box because I know why I'm playing that. Because I want to cut the supply route to his uh, central midfielders, but you know, knowing that that attack they can play well against like a four two three one is not enough. You need the players for it. So always plan for a tactic. So have a tactic and use that tactic first. Become good at that tactic, you'll be fine. Uh, don't worry about you know. Oh, you must have a different tactic. You know, just play a tactic. Asymmetric tactics, while they seem like. Uh, a good tactic to use is actually asymmetric, to be honest with you. An asymmetric tactic is one that is not like, you know, balanced, right? It's like everybody's using, uh, you got to play in this funny position, that funny position or whatever. The thing about asymmetric systems is um, that, that there's, a play, there's a way to play against asymmetric systems, but not many people will play that tactic. Right? So you should be fine. Yeah. So that's the best advice I can give you. Don't I mean some people will say there's this great meta tactic or whatever. I don't think it's true. It's how comfortable are you with your tactics? Uh and it and draft mode is not the same as AI. It's not it's not the same. You could you could easily okay, I'll just I'll, I'll save the game here so I can mess it, right? Mess it up. I'll show you some of my draft mode tactics. You'll be laughing. Yeah, let's see if I can. Oh, first I have to come off this, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Right. Just in case I get into trouble. Yeah, let's see if I can find my draft mode tactics. Where's my Dropbox? Dropbox, where are you? Why did it? Why is my Dropbox missing? Oh, there we go. Yeah, PvP. Where's PvP? Okay, I'll show you the first PvP set of tactics. Right? Okay. All right, okay. All right, okay. Look at this. All the bloody PvP tactics don't help you, right? So I played so many. I think this is the first few I used to play last time. Like, oh, yeah, I, I even used this. I've even used this and I beat somebody 7 0. Where is it? There we go. I've actually used this in PvP. Intentionally in PvP, just to use this tactic. This is a volante, right? So what I did in PvP was well, just change this room. No, I just went to this. I made it to a super box to box player. I turned this guy into a half bank. In PvP. But I played with these two as wingers. Then what I did was I counter counter press. Distribute the flanks. Take short kicks. Keeper sends the ball here. Keeper sends the ball here. Right, so it's a PvP tactic. But you know, but it can work in certain cases. Right? So it's not like it will work against everybody. But you have to understand your own tactic and then when will it play well. So I it can show you. It doesn't make a difference to me. Like, okay, uh load. I think I've got I mean these are some of the other PvP tactics I've got. Right. So I use this in PvP as well. I use this intentionally in PvP only for one reason. is because I just want to play through the middle. Like, okay, and then um, I think I got this PvP tactic as well. Right. Play this. I played this in FM playoffs when I went to the... Uh, made it to the semis, right? Yeah. Then, uh, then I've got other... Then I got this as well. So sometimes I intentionally play a specific tactic. I, I, I'm the worst guy, you know. I'll play with different tactics because it depends on my mood. I'm not... I, I mean, like... So, don't be like me. I even tried this. Monkey wrench. I call this monkey wrench. I don't know why. I call it a monkey wrench tactic. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. The idea was for these two guys to go forward. Inverter wing back to come into this pocket of space. Right? Inverter wing back to come here. And control the space. And then I got these three guys putting pressure on his fullbacks. And then only these two guys scoring goals. Actually, this is wrong. This one should have been uh, pressing for support. Yeah. I don't need him to go to the channels. Say, so I don't need... You see, this is when you need to understand why this you pick a certain role. If he goes to the channels, 
Only the Shadow Striker goes in the box. If he stays here, he stays on a defender. Right? So I get two in the box. Right? So I can change this guy to inverted wing of support. Inverted wing of support. This is another tactic. See, there's no such thing as the perfect PvP tactic. It's you. What? How do you feel comfortable about it? Because ultimately, one of the best PvP tactics in the game, you won't believe it, right? If I tell you this, you definitely won't believe me. You'll say bullshit. It's one of these. The 442 is a damn good PvP tactic because it's balanced. It covers all the it covers all the spaces. And this is the default tactic, right? It's actually quite good. Guy who's the ball. Guy who's the ball. You got target man, you got pressing forward. Pressing forward runs through the channel, supported by a winger. These two guys, this guy is an auto, no. This is a bloody preset tactic, yeah. Okay, from SI. Okay, they give they put this guy as an auto. You know what the auto duty does? He just Follows the mentality. So each time you shift it up, this guy becomes more attacking. So his mentality, you follow this. And then it's just, this is just about pinging crosses and getting them quickly up the pitch. I was actually beaten by this, by a friend of mine who played this. So I was like trying to, like, I was like, you know, he, he was playing, um, I was playing one kind of one complicated fucking tactic. <laughs> playing very, so sometimes you overcomplicate your nonsense, right? You also get into trouble. Okay. So I was playing this really complicated, like, you know, pass the ball nicely on a score some beautiful goals. But he, all he did was one, two, buckle my shoes, score a goal. One, two, buckle my shoes, score. He put one tall bugger here who was very, who was not particularly fast. In fact, it was about eight acceleration. And one Edson Cavani in front of him, okay. And all he did was put four goals past me because, and then I, I ended up looking like a bloody idiot. So you see, the thing here is not, it's not, is there a best tactic for all manager? It is the tactic you are most comfortable playing with. The one that you are playing with, right? So even if you're playing in the game that you're playing right now, try it. Right. But do not discount the 442. It's actually a very good PvP tactic. Right? In fact, I think uh, there's one guy, uh Lazy number nine, right? Okay. His PvP tactic that did quite well against a lot of people, and nobody could figure him out, right? I played him. He played the same tactic against me. I ripped through him like there was no tomorrow. Okay. He played Mazala, Mazala. And he was doing very well for him in PvP because everybody was going to the middle. Except for him. He didn't go to the middle. He went down the flanks. So when you see Mazala, all he was doing is really play out the flanks and getting out of the pitch. Hey. So I, mean, I looked at it and I said, how come all your players are watching the pitch anyway? When you're playing out, building up, play all this. Nobody's in the middle. So I went to the middle instead. Since you don't want to play in the middle, I'll play in the middle. So I locked down the flanks with uh, two wingbacks on defense. I think it was, uh, I think I, oh, I played the Brazilian box against them. Yeah. So, so it's entirely up to you, man. Best defense, best, de no, there's no such thing as best defense, best deep player, best mid, nothing. Because when you play draft mode, it's not the best, best. Is the best player you can find because okay, if I tell you tomorrow Casimiro is the best player, okay, okay, okay this is a very good one, right? Casimiro is the best player in uh, DM, but then you play with your friends and then your fantasy draft does not include their country. What are you gonna do? Best player, who's the who's the other best player then? You see, that's the problem. That's the first problem. The second problem is this: you think if that's the best player, you're the only one who knows about him. Everybody else knows about him too. You think you're gonna get him? Depends on the order the draft is in, right? So you're going to have to think about all those before you you think. So I get the beauty about fantasy draft, and this is why I recommend fantasy draft for anybody starting the game. You don't have to play against your friends. You can play against the AI. You want to make a 4-4-2? You're not used to a 4-4-2? Or you can't defend against a 4-4-2. Like, somebody just asked the question, how do I defend against a 3-5-2? So I'm going like, wow, you should play Fantasy Draft, man. Set all the AI teams to play 3-5-2. Because you can pick the managers. Right? Managers have a preferred playing style. So they all can have a 3-5-2. You can do your own training exercise within Football Manager by playing Fantasy Draft. So you pick what you think is your tactic with the best players. And then you have your own competition with the AI. It's playing... 352s and you just go to work having to break down back three systems and that's good practice for people who are not used to the game right 
It's a phenomenal way to play the game. So you have to learn to find the best place yourself. Look, if I show you my shortlist, you, you'd be scared. And uh, this other thing, the bigger your shortlist, the more you screw up your safe. Uh, like for example, some, some people have like this uh, very big shortlist. It increases the processing time from your machine to the server. So if your shortlist is like a thousand players because you want to cover the entire world's best players because you want to you want to know who's the best players in Denmark for the DM. Okay, maybe I'm playing Nigerian X. Who's the best player in Nigeria? So you, you, you created some massive database with like about 1,500 of the best place in Italy. So I'm doing the draft, no problem. I just, you know, I just filled out these countries, just focus on the country that I want. The game doesn't, the shortlist uh, doesn't operate that way. You are going to slow your own game now. When is the beta for FM22? Usually, uh, 37th, I think. November 9th is the launch, right? So it's usually, usually, if it's November 9th, it's, uh, it's like, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, 26, 27, I reckon. By next Wednesday, we should see the game out. The beta. Very confident. I'm very confident it's gonna be seven. Uh one at least two weeks before. That's what they've been doing the last three cycles. And have you noticed they have this uh thing about putting out a date now? Okay. If you've been playing the game of football manager as long as me, you know that there used to be a time when there was no date. <laughs> Football manager is not coming. You know, the football manager is coming out. Football manager is coming out. Remember that? I don't know if you guys can remember that. There was a long time ago. Left off. We never knew the date. So we ne we never even knew the date of the beta, for example, right? So now, as I pride itself on trying to hit certain milestones, because they have to report to a company, uh, so they got KPIs to meet, right? So the KP one of the KPIs to meet is definitely going to be. When is the date of your launch? If you're on that date, you get you meet your KPIs. And then your beta, when is your beta going out? So if I was the boss, if they are boss, I say I wanna know when the beta is coming out. Two weeks before. Okay. Right, right. Well if you don't hit the if so if you don't meet your KPI, all of you, we're gonna dock your pay by X amount of dollars. That kind of shit. That kind of thing happens. Yeah. So I'm sure it's gonna be two weeks. And I and I'm pretty certain it's gonna be on that day. Uh, yeah, hundred percent certain it's gonna be that day. You can see a lot of goals from counter attacks. If you can see a lot of goals of counter attacks, what well, in a fantasy draft, right? Okay, that means you're playing the game like you play against the AI. You see, when you play against the AI, you can harakiri all you like. You think people, human managers, are playing high defensive lines? They all know everybody's gonna play. Oh, because people sometimes. This is where people give Gagan pressing too much credit. Okay. You can Gagan press all you like against the AI. But you try Gagan pressing against me in Fantasy Draft. You see what happens to you. So if you do go, if you went in Gagan pressing thinking you read some article somewhere or some people say the Gagan pressing is a killer tactic, then you see you, the there are a lot of guys who are playing uh standard defensive lines. And like maybe right, some of them play very high splits, like stand, standard defensive line, high line engagement. But it depends on your tactic, right? So if your tactic is like a 4 2 4, you can afford to do that. But there's a big gap in the middle. So they notice there's a big gap in the middle. So what they do is they let you do the press, but lose the ball and they try and win the ball in the center. You feel that this game is too hard and not enough help on the game? Ma uh, Asad, keep it simple then. Hey, Asad, what are you going to do uh, if you think this game is too hard? Is, okay. All right, if, if you think the game is very hard, this is what I, I advise you to do, right? Okay. First, don't pick a favorite club. Never pick a favorite club. I know it's a painful thing to hear, but do not play with your favorite club. Because every time you play with your favorite club, you don't do as well as you want them to do. You start hating the game, you start hating things, everything, right? So don't do that. Pick the club you hate the most. And play with them. Yeah. At least if they lose, you you can't be asked. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you're gonna play a club, don't pick a club that is like um Man City, for example. Like you know, they expect to be champions, right? So if you don't get the results, you get fired. So always pick a medium club. So like in the premiership, I always tell people Everton is a good team to pick because they don't have ambitions to win the title. 
and they don't have ambitions to Champions League, but they have ambitions to avoid the drop. So anywhere in the middle is fine. So you pick a club like that, and then you play with them. Now, then you try to, you know, Everton's expectations are seven, and then you finish six. That's good. See, we all started like that. I started like that too. I didn't start winning every single game. I started by meeting the expectations. And then you're going to see a lot of guys, a lot of us, a lot of people out there making different kinds of things. And I'm guilty of doing that. I, I next, next season, my FM22 channel, I only play one tactic. One tactic only. Okay, I'm done with this. Uh, watch me play with 355 different tactics in a season kind of nonsense. I'm not doing that. The reason is because that is not the way you should be playing. Like, oh, I changed my tactic because he does that. I don't want to set a bad example. So, play one tactic throughout the season and change only under certain circumstances. Maybe your players got injured. Uh, yeah. That's the only time you will change it, right? So, or that, that kind of thing. So, uh, that's the only time you should be changing your tactic. So, try and master one tactic and then choose a tactic that you are comfortable with. You watch a lot of on TV. Like, a good... Like, a lot of people think, right? Okay, let's like... If, coming to this, right? How do you play... How do you play football manager if you're struggling? Right, okay. You know, a lot of people like this tactic for some strange reason. You know why I don't play with this tactic on streets? Because this is not as easy as it looks. Okay. This is a 4-3-3. It's very popular. A lot of people say play the 4-3-3. It's a great tactic because you dominate play. In fact, one of my best tactics of all time for football manager is this tactic. The liquid system, right? It just hammered every... You just have to hit the continue button and then you win every single trophy. Problem with this tactic is if the center doesn't move up, you don't score a lot of goals. The only way to score goals is by drawing or positioning and hitting on the counter. Man, you know how difficult that is? <laughs> There's nobody here. So you gotta move teams around. This is like this is like one of those like balancing act tactics, right? You gotta get the combinations right. So a lot of people try this and they get frustrated because they score a lot of goals. So pick a tactic that's easier. I'll tell you which tactic is damn easy. Right? Pick something like this. A 4 2 3 1. This is so much more easier to play. This is one of the easiest tactics to play and master, right? Why? This role, change it to AM. What have you got? Now you got three-man anchor. It is already in the opposition half. And all you gotta do is just score goals. Like make sure that these guys can bring these guys can bring the ball up. That's it. Start with a tactic that's easier for you to play, right? This is like a top heavy system. You can score goals with it. You can defend with it. You know, all you gotta do is like ah, uh, maybe I'll just put a CM on defense, one DLP on support, and then one AM on support. Then maybe I just hey, what even this tactic as it is, you can play with it. Because this guy's holding up the ball. That's it. Not to, so never, try not to overcomplicate your tactics too much, right? So a lot of these presets, you don't need all that. It's a bit overkill. This is like Tiki Taka. Who was Tiki Taka? I don't know. Die. Early, an early death out of boredom. So okay, fine. Let's just drop this. Just change it. Okay. All right. I mean, counter press. My players are too tough. You know, they tell you, do you need to counter press? I right, counters. You see, now distribute quickly. Who wants to distribute quickly? Let's slow the game down. Okay, roll it out. Okay, this game, roll it out or short kicks is the two. Your cook, your keeper cannot kick balls, right? He's got poor first touch, always roll it out or throw it long. See, in terms of priority, uh, they ordered it in a very nice way for people. No? Roll it out if your keeper is useless. Throw it long if your keeper is kicking is useless. <laughs> Take short kick if your keeper can kick the ball with his feet. Take long kicks if your keeper is really good at kicking long feet. I mean, like, it's ordered in such an easy way. It's like it's a difficulty level. Easiest, difficult, easiest to highest. How, how, it's not that bad, so you go with this. Then keep it simple. So, don't download tactics as well. Even if you download tactics, it makes things so much harder. Because everybody makes a difficult tactic, man. You see, like, so sorry, lower expectations. If you're the sort of person, right, don't get influenced by your friends. <clears throat> One of my friends stopped playing football manager after he stopped me streaming. <laughs> he stopped completely. <laughs> I felt sorry, man. So he was managing Spurs. Then he saw me streaming, right? They said, how do I have to win so many games? I said, what do you mean? 
I went to his save, right? He had a, he's, he's like, he's been relegated more times in Spurs than I know. So I looked at him, I said, what the fuck have you been doing in your game? No, I just like, you know, I downloaded this tactic and then I, you know, I just, you know, I just quick pick <laughs> and then I just play and then I just hit the continue button. I'm saying, dude, that, you, why do you buy a game called Football Manager when you're not managing the team? So, you know, do the basics in the game and you'll be fine, right? Don't overcomplicate the shit, right? Pick a stack. The easiest tactic is this tactic. 4 2 three, one. Okay, the second easiest tactic in this game actually is... uh. Okay, the second easiest tactic is probably the 442 if you're willing to give it a go. Because once you master the 442, man, any tactic, you won't be playing. Trust me, once you master 442, you'll never play any other tactic. You don't need to because you're damn good at the game already. So you can 442. 442's cousin, what? Same principle. It, when you play a 442, you have to learn how to get the players in these positions. With roles and duties. Right. So if you don't know how to do that, then you start with a 4 2 3 one. Right. But you want to learn how to get players into certain positions with roles and duties, then you play for 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 the 4 4 2. And then something else, right? I see. Something I like to do. I'm probably gonna do this. I'm pro I don't know whether I'm gonna do this or not, but I'm, I'm telling you the idea. Okay, I was toying with the idea of making something like this for FM22. <laughs> Let me see, yeah. So this will be the wing bat on attack, right? Or rather, this, this guy will be wing bat on attack. Okay, it's gonna be a DM. So this guy is gonna be really on. A, it's, like, it's gonna be super on attack. This guy is gonna be his winger, all right. And then I got this this group here like this. Hey, when you make a tactic like this, right, which is asymmetric, right? Like you got totally no cow sense what's happening in this tactic. It's great for PvP because nobody is gonna understand it as well. Right? So what you do is you gotta think about the roles, right? You gotta think, okay, I wanna work the ball from defense to attack. How do I get the ball up? Oh uh, then like you know, uh, these guys will get the ball, then this guy is gonna dribble. Okay, it's a ball play defender to bring the ball up. Okay, this this part is quite straightforward, right? Come here. Uh, oh shit, this guy, he's got to dribble quite far or halfway line before he can give the ball to anybody. So you got to think about this guy then. What role do you want this guy to be? Maybe a DLP will help? A Segundo Volante can help? A like halfback can help? Then, then you need this guy to help out, help him out, right? So what do you want here? Come see, uh, you need come see to get the ball. Help him, so he comes see to get the ball. Or you play a Mazala. Mazala will be playing in the half spaces. Beside or Carrello. So you got support, right? Hey, because this guy has got such a long journey, right? There's no point asking you to get further. So this guy becomes support. So sometimes you make tactics, you want to make an asymmetric tactic, then you gotta start thinking in terms of those. Like, how do I get like this is Actually, why do I do this? It's kind of funky. How the hell are you gonna defend here, man? Oh, this is kind of cool, man. Shadow Striker attack. AM on attack. This guy goes to the flanks. Because I, I need to move into channels. This guy has to move into channels, right? So it's got to be somebody who moves into channels. And once more, will be fine. He is, if he's too aggressive, then he will be by his lonesome. Okay, we got this whole bunch of mental fillers putting pressure here. We'll send you on attack. Okay. Even more pressure. This, this is me making a tactic for football manager, uh, FM22. This guy has be a ball play defender or stopper. So I set him up here. Okay, now, okay, assume I want to do it a different way. I can do it like this. I can do it like this. Okay, now I got a big balance. Now this guy's going to run through the middle, right? Underlapping play. Right, so this guy can be inside forward on attack. This guy can be a winger on support. This guy can be wide center back on attack. So he goes through the middle. Now, because this should be a problem. Right? This guy's going to come inside, right? The other thing you got to remember in Football Manager is that you don't want to have, like, sometimes you put three fillers in a row like this. This is not a good idea. The maximum you want to do is two. Right? Two. This will help you work the ball up the pitch because we, we are playing. This is a very difficult tactic to defend against. Why? Because it's got a lot of uh, players in it, in uh, the channels. Like one, two, three, four, 
five, six, there are six channels in this tag thing. So I got six channels in this tag thing. And one, two, three, four, five tiers. So this is a very interesting. I want to save this. <laughs> uh, we are. Okay, save. Uh, okay, all right. FM 22. Ah, oh, sheesh kebabs. FM 22 trial. Let's see. I'm going to try this out later. This could be interesting. If why centre back goes up this way? This guy this guy will definitely have to play as a halfback. 100%. Okay. He's definitely a halfback. This one can definitely uh, can be played as a wide centre back or support. So he's going to come here. Which means I can release him. He can be able to wing on attack. Because the white center back comes here, this guy can attack. So he now he is going to be looking for players to give the ball to. Mazala is coming in here to support play. No, no need. This guy can be a box-to-box -box midfielder. He can punch up and down. You see, this is what you do, right? But you can only do this kind of stuff if you understand roles and duties. You can only get to this position, right? If you are experimenting with tactics. So... You know, you're gonna do all this kind of stuff. Then you gotta go to the basics, right? So start playing with like a 4 2 3 1 first. Play a 4 4 2. Master one tactic. And you'll be okay. But don't make things complicated for yourself by trying to make tactics like this. This kind of tactic is just gonna, like, you know, when it goes wrong, you don't know where it's going wrong. You're like, Ugh. And sometimes when people send me tactics, right? Okay. All right. I tell you. I do these Wednesday streams where people study their tactics, ask me for help, right? You know the worst, the one tactic I don't see. I always pray I don't get it. It's asymmetric tactics. Because I will spend at least 15 minutes dissecting it in my head first because trying to figure out how the damn tactic moves across the pitch. So can you imagine if I'm spending 15 minutes, how long it will take you if you're, you're making it for the first time? So one thing I will recommend, right, for you guys is when you're playing this game Football Manager, Keep things simple. Play a simple tactic, a 4-4-2 or 4-2-3-1, but there's going to be a lot of hype for back three systems in uh, when Football Manager 22 releases. In fact, I will most likely be playing a back three as well. I'm definitely playing a back three. I'm probably going to play either my Holland replication. You guys got to hear it now. You know my Holland replication from 1998. I've got one. My... Uh, Atalanta replication Gasparini's Atalanta replication but that was a bit harder because it's got a rotating diamond that was very hard to achieve but I'm going to try then there is the Atletico Madrid 3-5-2 that Diego Simeone used last season that was actually pretty good when they were playing it because that one they have these three really solid central midfielders Right, so that's another option. So I haven't thought with the other. But I'm, I'm more inclined towards like a 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1, 3-4-1-2. So yeah. So you see a lot of people play the 3. But should you jump into a 3, will it be the best tactic? I guarantee you it's not going to be the best. A lot of, There'll be a lot of people saying that it's very, very strong. I think it's going to be very strong. However, uh, these back 3 systems are all vulnerable to the flank attack. Right. When you have a white centre back, it's going to be white. Right? So the channel between the white central defender and the central defender is always going to be exposed. Uh, so if you don't set it up correctly, you're going to be in trouble. So it's not going to be as easy as uh, as easy as pie. But it's going to be fun. I recommend people try it out. But if you're struggling, don't do it. Right? If I were you, man. Try something simple. You are so I am like... Loads of, oh, yeah, overloading is going to be, uh, is, I think when, with the white center back, overloading is just going to be like, close eyes, you overload. <laughs> you don't have to try. It's like, you're just going to get overload, man, without even trying. You won't even know an overload. In fact, you guys are not going to bother with overloads. Ask, you're never going to send me questions like, how do you do an overload in the game? None of you are going to ask me, you know? You're going to, what the hell is, bloody hell, overloads is like, <laughs> Three years ago, everybody was like, what's an overload? Now everybody's going to go like, hey man, I do overloads. Yeah, what's the problem? Tuchel's 3 4 2 one, the one that Chelsea is using, I'm not a big fan of the system because I'll tell you why. 
I have to the that that two calls three four two one is going to be my book, right? So the when the guide goes out, that I'm going to have the replication in there anyway. But I'm not playing. I probably I don't know. It's kind of. I'm not a big fan of having a complete forward in front. Tukul's, Tukul's one is a complete forward. So mine won't be... I won't be playing Tukul, but I'll make it available for you guys, you know. You And you'll see why Tukul's Romelu Lukaku is not going to score 40 goals this season. If you don't remember, right? I did it at the start of the stream, guys. Right? So let me just show you the thing again. At the start of the stream, right? I was talking about this. Like, what well, XG numbers for Rimole Lukaku, right? His, uh, his XG per 90 is comparable to when he was in Inter Milan. So, you know, the time where he's, he was prolifically banging away goals, right? Scoring all those goals in Inter Milan is still comparable. It's not like it's, it's a big difference. Okay. Uh, in terms of assists per 90, slightly better at Chelsea right now than he was at Inter Milan. Okay. But look at this. It does for XG, right? Per 90. If you compare Mo Salah and our friend, okay, the difference between the two of them isn't very far apart. 52 versus 57.5457. That means that he gets himself into, he gets uh, one great chance to score a goal every two games. The difference between him and Mo Salah is basically the total number of goals they've scored because then, then, there's a, then you have to ask yourself, why are they, why is there such a big dispersion between the two? Because if you look at the key passes and the XA per 90, Mo Salah is doing more in terms of goal scoring output for the whole team. And by goals and building up play and by every creative metric in the game, Mo Salah is doing a much better game, uh, playing a much better game. Whereas our friend, Mr. Romelu Lukaku, at the moment with uh, Chelsea, the system that they're playing at the moment, right? He's going to see Lukaku creating chances, but not necessarily banging in like prolifically. I don't... Uh, if you have put money on Romelu Lukaku to be the top scorer in the Premier League this season, he has a lost cause. Man. It's going to be a lost cause. You're going to lose a lot of money here. Because there are two reasons why a player's XG and goals can diverge, right? The first reason is that it's a team style of play that creates those kind of opportunities. So the team style of play is giving him lots of opportunities which allows him to have a, sp a spread. What the spread we're looking for is a 30% spread. That means uh, if if uh, if my XG is like, it says I have a XG of 10 goals for the season. My actual goal output should be 13 or higher. So 13 is like the 30% range. So that that is considered, okay, that's good. Okay, all right, that's that's acceptable. And how does that happen? It happens two ways. Team gives you great chances and your finishing is very good. Okay, now we break these two things down, right? Then we look at Lukaku. And then we look at the total great chances that he's received. It's the same. As, as, uh, as, uh, what's his name? Face, Salah. Okay. He's the same. 0.5. He only gets half a chance a game. So, what Chelsea need to do, because apparently the other bet, the other thing that Salah has that Lukaku is strugg currently struggling with is skill. Because that's the only other explanation people are going to give you. Salah is just too skillful. I mean, after his ballerina act, who's going to argue, right? So, it falls out to, if we, if we look at the raw numbers, then it, we will we will dive, take a deeper dive into this and look at the total shots that he's having, everything else. He's getting the shots. Lukaku at the moment, the system that Chelsea are using just doesn't get the best out of him. But in terms of getting chances for the rest of the team, it is. It's the best because he has never had such a higher XA. Even in Milan, he didn't have that higher number. So he is presenting opportunities to the rest of his players, but he's not getting any assists. Uh, will I give you the 3 4 2 one? I'll give you the 3 4 two, one but don't come to me and ask me to get uh, perfect score lines for your CF. He's not going to get them as well because it will be a replication of Chelsea's 
right? So, or I would say it's a replication. That's quite bad. It's not a replication. It's close to. Close to. In fact, the Atlanta system, there's no way it's a replication. Man. Who the hell can replicate their rotating diamond? It's impossible. Even my Holland Retro 1998 tactic, which, I'm, which is coming for FM22, even that tactic is just like a slight, it just, I took a few liberties with it, right? Because I wanted to, I wanted, my goal was that Frank, I was after Frank the Bohers passed to Dennis Burkham. That was all. As far as replication is concerned, right? All I wanted was that the, the, the defender bringing up the ball and looking for the striker. So I was like, okay, how do I get this with the guys out wide? Defender brings the ball and then he just dings one over the top. So I was thinking, okay, fine. Now you give me the white centre back, I got a chance. Salah could be number one in the world at the moment in terms of uh, the being the best goal scorer. But you have to understand one thing as well, right? Okay. Players always do this just prior to their contract. Even in football manager, you see it. You know, just before a player asks for a good contract, you suddenly see him like, oh, he's banging in the goals. Like, oh my goodness, suddenly he's like, oh, I, I think I've got the next Balloon Dior. <laughs> That's how I feel all the time. So I'm like, oh God, I think I've found my next Balloon Dior. Fakuno Gaetan, please stand up. <laughs> okay. It's happened to me a few times. Then after they, after they sign the contract, they suddenly disappear. So his contract, the agent is already in, in London, man. They want they want uh five hundred thousand pounds per week. Liverpool is offering three hundred and fifty thousand pounds per week. Holy shit! He wants to be. Yeah, exactly. That solo goal versus Watford just, definitely just raises his asking price. He's he just enhanced his negotiating position, that's for sure. And now every single club in Europe is going... Uh, uh, Real Madrid want to do a trade. Cash plus Aiden Hazard. Can you believe it? They just took Aiden Hazard. Now they want to give him back. <laughs> there we, bloody hell, this Hazard is useless. He's always getting injured. You can have him. You think Liverpool is going to... Oh, yeah, right. We'll, we'll take Aiden Hazard. Yeah, no problem. It's not going to happen. And the thing about Liverpool as well, if you think about it, you look at Liverpool. Liverpool are littered with under youth. The youth team is damn good, okay? That youth team in Liverpool is the next great players are all there. I'm like looking at them going, no wonder we didn't go out to sign players. Looking at the players coming through the academy, uh, some of them are not academy players, right? The Polish player is not academic. He's not an academy player. So we, we signed it. We pushed a couple of players when they're young. We added them to the uh, the youth team and they're looking damn good, man, right now. So I think as far as uh, Jurgen Club is concerned, that's the reason why they didn't go into the market for buying new players. Speaking of which, right, guys, okay, if you're into all this uh, analysis, deep, deep dive analysis that I like to do, right, I know it's a bit over the top for some people. I know, I know you guys think it's over the top. I like to follow some people, right? So this one guy called Ben Torveni, okay? So I recommend, he's a good fella to follow. The another one that I recommend you guys follow is this guy, William Spearman. He's the Liverpool analytics, uh, the main guy in the analytics department, right? He's the he's the, actually the brains in Liverpool's analytics department to identify all these young and upcoming players. If you want to just... I'm not, I'm not doubting their names or whatever shit. Love, okay? If you're into this whole analytical side of the game, like why okay, XG and goals, for example, right? You know, if you want to understand the game a bit more. I'm not suggesting that you need to get a PhD to play this game. Nobody said that. Yeah. I just... Sometimes... Because... Okay. okay let me put it to you in perspective. 10 years ago, when you watch a team play football, I guarantee you that you wouldn't go into the game and say, oh, you know, the link-up play was very good, la, 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 la. Or, you know, they created an overload to unlock that side of the pitch. And 10 years ago, they just hoof the ball, dribble, put the ball on the flank, one drop in one cross. Or one guy does a dribble from one end of the pitch to the other end of the pitch and tries to call a goal. Right? That was football. Okay, 10, bloody 15 years ago. When Cristiano Ronaldo and Ryan Giggs used to run down the flank playing their 4 Because there wasn't way, there wasn't very much in terms of tactics, right? There, was, there wasn't that much, right? Uh, so, 
So the modern game has changed, right? So much so that as I try to incorporate some of these elements into the game, which means the game is also going to start getting harder at a certain level. So if you want to get better at the game, understanding, you know, start with a 442. Learn to master it. Yeah, I, seriously, you master the 442. Please, guys, I keep saying this to people all the time. Yeah, you become a you become good at a 442. You're not gonna be good at this game. You're gonna be phenomenal at this game. Nobody can come close to you if you can play a 442 well. Trust me. A lot of people don't want to play a 442. Especially in streaming. How many people want to play? You, you see me, I only stream I stream at Nottingham Forest with a 442, right? Not a lot of people stream 442 because there's lots of room for errors with a 442. But that's why you'll get better with the game because you'll be learning about your players, what role, what players can play those positions, you know, uh, how to control space with certain players. You will play a 4-4-2 and then you will understand what is the best combination for a two-man midfield. How do you know? What kind of midfield should you use? What is the difference between using a ball-winning midfielder and a box-to-box -box midfielder? What's the difference between using a DLP and a box-to-box -box midfielder? Or what's the difference between a DLP and defend and a DLP or support? You won't know any of that. You'll be going asking people on videos for nothing and wasting your bloody time because the answers are all going to be different from different people. So go play a 4 4 to try those things out and you will suddenly start noticing things in your game that nobody in any video can tell you. So my advice, because it's so different. It's so bloody different. Like, Lazy number nine played with two mazalas in the middle of the pitch, right? So it baffled everybody. When I saw two mazalas, I went like, hey, 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 hey. you're giving me the middle, brother. Thank you very much. See, Lavi, enjoy yourself. Boom. I think it was, wait, was I? I think I played a 3 4 1 2 against him. Yeah, now I remember. I played a 3 4 1 2 against him. I dismantled his 4 4 2. So, so I, I think that if you want to go forward, Right. I know that one, I mean, I keep coming back to you because Asad, I feel for you, man. The game feels too hard and there's not enough help in the game. I truly agree with you, right? Sometimes the game is very hard. But what I would recommend is play the 442 and keep things simple. That's it. Pick a club like Everton. Don't pick Manchester United. Never pick your favorite clubs. So I thank everybody for popping into today's stream. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Right now, I've got to go and Carry on working on FM32. So, on yes, I don't know if I'm streaming again on Wednesday and Friday because I'm going to go into this uh, big, like, cranking the, <laughs> cranking the thing up <laughs> just to finish all the stuff. But I'm hoping to see you guys very soon. So maybe Wednesday will be streaming, but a much shorter stream, and then on Friday as well. Definitely catch up with you guys because this whole Newcastle's this the whole Newcastle story is just. Like, you know what I'm saying? Newcastle is just going mental, man. Man. I think all these English clubs are selling their souls, selling who they are, their history. It's all going away as countries are now emerging as owners of English football clubs. You guys, stay safe, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.